ACC PM from beautiful Washington, D.C., where I found out today the cherry blossoms are at stage four. We're one stage away from full bloom, and this is a beautiful, beautiful place. And everybody's looking for that trophy right there because tomorrow night, somebody's walking out of town calling themselves the ACC Men's Basketball Champion. And here you go, courtside. And there's no bands, there's nobody here, but this place will be rocking tonight because Jim Beheim's going to strike up the music about uh, 601, technically, right when this show ends before we get you ready. But here's what it looks like. The brackets are set. North Carolina and Pitt first game tonight. Bunch of chalk on that side. And there's Virginia after surviving an overtime thriller last Ooh. night against uh, Boston College against that upstart NC State crowd with a 10 beside their name. And they're not feeling it. They're like, we belong and let's go. That's what you got tonight. And speaking of the Wolfpack, Jim Behan, they're celebrating, man. They're partying like rock stars. Well, hey, like they, stars. they got hey, further they than some people further thought they'd get already or way farther. But uh, they're playing really good basketball, and they deserve to be right where they are. And they are capable of beating anybody. You got it. All right. Uh, NC State is a feel-good story, needless to say. Um, Man, last night was kind of nuts, right? I mean, we talked about the whole thing with Duke and NC State, Tobacco Road, yada, yada. Duke, how are they going to bounce back after getting beat by North Carolina? Uh, Carlos, you were on with us with Jay Will and everybody else and said, you know what, you're going to find some toughness tonight. NC State punched and kept hitting, and they're still alive and kicking. Yeah, they were great. I mean, they were aggressive. DJ Horn did a great job of getting the party started. DJ Byrne is a, is a mismatched nightmare. He's so physical with great touch, good footwork on the block. And the other guys, O'Connell's been playing so outstanding. The R has been playing outstanding. The kid had 14 rebounds, a bunch of points, a bunch of blocks. His impact was felt. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just I felt like NC State is rolling. They're hitting their shots. This is the best I've seen them play, maybe even all season, to be honest with you. They're playing terrific at the right time. Duke never got back in the fight. I thought Filipowski was great. I thought Mitchell was great. I thought the guards really struggled with the physicality of the other guards of NC State. And kudos to them. They, they had the right game plan. They played it perfectly. They got a five-point win, and they're still alive. You know, sometimes when you play those first games, you get a rhythm, and that's what NC State had, and Duke couldn't match it. And I think the thing with Horn being out, especially the last game, a little bit not practicing, the other guys realized well, we got to we got to do something here, mm -hmm. and especially Connolly, he realized I got to I got to play. And now Horn comes back, and now they've got those guys too, so they really have a much more well balanced team than you saw during the year. This team is way better yep. than they were during the year. Mm -hmm. And I like how Marcel's playing, too. Obviously, we know him as a defender, but he hit some big shots, got to the yeah. basket. Just very, very good basketball team. Really, like Coach said, very balanced. And that's what Coach Keats kind of talked about after the game. The people you're mentioning are guys' names we didn't call a ton throughout the season in a, a Michael O'Connell. And, and Mo Diara has had moments, but not like he's had on the stage here. Amazing. 14 points, 16 rebounds, four blocks in yesterday's win he had. And what he said afterwards was, first of all, for Michael O'Connell, he's their pure point guard, the only one they have on the team. And he comes from Stanford. He said he's the smartest guy, literally, basketball and book-wise, we have on our team. And he's starting to use his voice more Look, in this transfer world, you get comfortable, everyone at their own rate. But also, Coach, you just alluded to it. Without DJ Horn out there, who's going to be the voice? And it looks like he's not only showing it in his play, yeah. but he's doing it vocally, too. And everybody's following suit, which is really cool. But defensively, too, is what stood out to me. And you alluded to it, is how NC State's guards matched up with Duke's guards. And it wasn't just... It was the physicality that they brought to, but it just felt like they were on him from the jump and never let them get going with Tyrese Proctor and, and Jeremy Roach um, and, and the rest of the crew. It was a struggle. Yeah, they were just physical. They had a mindset. They had an attitude about them. They approached the game from the tip that we weren't going to give you anything easy. Mm -hmm. um, they made it difficult for Duke, and Duke never got over that hump. You know, I thought at some point they would turn on a little bit. I thought Filipowski had a great game. He was on the block. He was mixing it up. He was getting to the free throw line. He was making his baskets. Mitchell did a great job. They were playing off him. He attacked the drive. He was offensive rebounding, putting the ball in. I just felt like the guards never matched the physicality of NC State's guards. Right. And that was a strength for them. And Can they do it again tonight? Why not? Yeah. That's what, that's what DJ Horseman's saying, why not us? But it is, will be their fourth game 
in four days. You have to keep that in mind. But they looked really fresh last night. It didn't look like they had played three straight. I think the problem with Virginia is they make you run around on defense. You have to chase them, especially the guards. They're running off the screen. For a whole possession. For the whole 30 <laughs> seconds. So I, I think at the end of the night, and I, I thought Boston College got tired last night. Yeah. And so I, I think the same thing tonight. They chase Virginia around as long as it's in touch. Where, where Virginia's had a problem this year is some teams have jumped on them mm -hmm. and it didn't matter. You know, they, they're down 20 points. NC State's capable of that. Right. They're capable of going out and get a 20-point lead and Virginia's not coming back from 20. So that's if, they, if Virginia keeps it close, then I think at the end they'll wear them down and, and, and probably win the game. Here was Kevin Keats last night after the big win by the Wolfpack. When we, when we got on that plane, we had a mission, okay? And we, we said we're gonna do it one game at a time, okay? You have put together three hell of a games, okay, against really good teams. <laughs> what was that move, Carlos? You, you, you're up to speed on the dance moves. What was that with Keats? That's that new joint. They call that the Keats. <laughs> yeah. They call that the Keats. <laughs> and man, happy for Casey Morrisell, too. This is home for him. Yeah. So he's getting to make this run in front of this home crowd. Pretty cool for him. Uh, again, he deserved to dance with that win. Again, uh, NC State. Here you go. The 10 seed still alive and kicking. It doesn't happen a whole lot in this league. Uh, but look how many times you see NC State on this list, all right? Three times. And again, with the opportunity tonight to play Virginia to get to five games in five days, which has never, ever happened in this tournament format. That's, that's crazy. Talk it's, about overload. And they, they'll, they would sign up for it in a millisecond. Connecticut did it. Yeah. Kemba, miracle kind of year. But yeah. uh, it's hard to do. It's hard to go that fifth. All right, uh, we do a thing on the old ACC PM show. And, uh, of course, Taylor's been on the NC State bandwagon oh, yeah. from Monday yeah. because the smart people back in Bristol ask us this question. It's kind of a confidence meeting. The first thing was about NC State, can he win two or more games? And Taylor had a ton of confidence. We played that yesterday. Well, the Another question this week was, is it going to be chalk in the ACC final? Are we going to get Duke and Carolina? What's the confidence meter? And so it was my turn to answer that. And here's what you got. This is on Monday. It's March. Crazy stuff happens. Okay. It's been a while since we had one and two in the ACC championship game. In fact, last time I think it happened was in D.C. About seven, eight years ago. At Chucky. We need you. Just, just I think it's the last time we've seen one and two. So I, I think there's going to be a little unrest. I do. I don't know which side. But I think there could be some unrest okay. here. All right. But if we do get Duke, North Carolina, I'm all for it. Hopefully everybody behaves. And we just talk about great basketball. But we'll see how it plays that out. Sounds like my kind of day. <laughs> Didn't happen, did it? So, again, everybody who just says, ah, oh, it's Duke, Carolina, and everybody else. I think the league this year, uh, for folks who have watched it, I'm not talking about analytics. I'm talking about people who watch basketball. <laughs> this league has been deep. It's been tough. And yeah. lo and behold, Duke's going to have a front row seat at home watching somebody else play. That's the problem. It's all analytics all around the country, everybody that does the brackets. And if you go from the premise of net, that means you're going with teams that didn't play anybody and got a good net, and then they played other teams that didn't play anybody and have a good net. Yeah. If you watch basketball, you know in our league, Georgia Tech is not a great team. If you look at their net, it's, oh, that's terrible. Well, they beat Duke. They beat North Carolina. They beat Clemson. They beat Mississippi State. And they're in the bottom of our league. So if the bottom teams can do that, you do have a good lead. We beat each other up, and that hurts us. I think we're going to get probably a little bit less than we deserve at the end of the day. We probably will get five teams in. I think we should get six. I think Wake should be in. I mean, to say that Pittsburgh is not in yet, you cannot possibly believe that if you've ever watched anybody play basketball. They have seven road wins. And that is very hard to do. I, I doubt there's many teams in the tournament this year that have seven road wins. So they're in the tournament. And I think Wake should be. I don't know if they'll make it. But uh, the league has been undervalued for the last 10 years. And guess what? In the tournament itself, our league has won the most games and the most championships. Yep. So, I mean, what do we have to do?
keep on keeping on. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll compare some resumes a little bit later. Yeah, in we'll show. get we'll get oh, into yeah. that. We'll but as far started. as Duke is concerned, uh, you know, and they got to kind of look in the mirror a little bit before they jump start into March Madness. This was John Shire last night after the ball game talking about the effort by the Blue Devils. I think for us though, it's about the the competitive fire you need to have in the postseason and. Uh, you know, I told these guys, one, I think both these guys um, were big-time competitors today. They almost willed us to win the game. You know, they're playing a lot of minutes. Uh, you know, combined, they, they have 46 and 22, but I just thought they had the, the will to win, which is what you need. But we didn't have that collectively overall. And for us, it's we have to go get back to it and work and – the biggest postseason is ahead of us, and we're going to be in the tournament. We're excited about that. I don't know where we're going to go, what seed we're going to be. Um, but my thing is all about getting ready and focused for that. So obviously I'll answer any questions these guys will answer. Uh, but it's disappointing, and uh, we're going to get back to work. Bottom line, going to get back to work and figure this out. Carlos, your concern about Duke. Well, I think, I think Coach Shire said it best. They're going to get back to work. They're going to figure it out together. Um, they still have had a hell of a season. Nobody expected them to lose the first day on Thursday night in the ACC tournament. ton of talent over there. But they got to figure out a way to, to win some of the tough games. Like last night was a tough game. You know what I mean? And, and they got close, but they didn't get over the hump. And that's something that this team has to figure out. You find out who you really are when you get knocked down. They got knocked down at home in a great game at Carolina. Um, they got knocked down again at Duke in the last game of the season. They got knocked down here last night against an NC State team who couldn't wait to play that game. They were hungry. They, they wanted it more, in my opinion. And so now you, you wait to see what happens on Sunday, what seed you'll be, where you'll be at, can the fans get there. We've, our Duke fans travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. They'll be there. Um, but like I said last night, to a man, you got to go look in the mirror, self-reflect, what can I do better? Let me get back in the lab and get to work and figure out how to help this team get over the hump. Each player has to do that. I think when you look at tournament play, teams that really have to win and teams that are in the tournament, there's a difference. And that team today, what happened? Tennessee, mm. Yep. they get beat. Right. And Tennessee's a really good team, mm -hmm. been good all year. But the bottom line for Tennessee and for Duke, you play well in the NCAA tournament, no one is going to remember this week. It's true. It's as simple as that. When you get to this stage of the year and you're good, Duke is good, Tennessee is good, all that anybody's going to remember is what happens in the next three, four weeks. What were the odds would have been if I said to you before this tournament started, hey, Clemson and Duke, like both these clubs, and we've talked about them a bunch, yeah. not going to win a game in D.C., right? Yeah. I mean, that's what we had. Yeah, I mean, you don't think that's going to happen. I, I I just think in our league, the bottom teams, Boston College, NC State, they're good teams. Mm -hmm. I, I'll put them up against any league in the country, teams in that area of their conference. Uh, especially in Boston College is really good. I think they had the game won. I think they ran out of gas against Virginia, and mm -hmm. Virginia made great plays at the end. But I, I think NC State can compete with anybody. and. They have that chip on their – this is it for us. You know, yep. we got to leave it all out here. And, you know, you want your team – John Schreier wants his team to have that feeling too. But they have next week, and they know they have it. So it's a little bit different. There's a little bit less to just I got to get this game than there was from NC State. You don't want that as a coach. You know, North Carolina had it. They had everything going for that in that game but you you gotta you gotta recognize at the end of the day in the world we're in today it's what you do in the ncaa tournament when you're a good team that's all that matters you got it can't wait man tonight's gonna be fun it's gonna be a blast we'll get into more of this in hour number two as well but nc state virginia uh you've already talked about the fact that hey state get your running shoes on because virginia's gonna make every possession a long possession you gotta go chase yes. them but NC State just seems to have that mojo. That Taylor talked about it on Monday. She had a good vibe about the Wolf Pack. Yeah, but she only took two. She <laughs> right. to take them all the you got to get five. We're going to we're going to talk about that at the end are, of the show. I have some apologies. That? Yes, oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Some, some self reflection. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. <laughs> so what about tonight? 
NC State, Virginia. Yeah, I, I got Virginia. I think uh, what we talked about earlier, what Coach talked about earlier, they're going to grind them out. They're going to wear them out. This is four and four nights, which is hard to do. I don't care if you're in high school. That's hard to do. Um, and also, this is a – when I walked in, I said on our show last night, all I heard was UVA, UVA. Yeah. This whole place was orange. Yeah. It's like yeah. a home game for them. So, I got I, I got UVA tonight. It was. The, this place was on fire. Yeah. If it's a 20-point game, NC – NC State's going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. State. yeah. You got it. If NC it's close, State, it's going to be UVA. It's UVA. If it's a 20-point game, the only thing that can win by 20 is NC State. Yeah. How, how about that battle inside, though? Because we've seen such great play. Yeah. Uh, DJ Burns is, is different. Everyone says Ooh. he's just a different kind of cat to guard. And you have Jordan Miner on the other side and then Mo Diara and everything he's doing. And Middlebrooks as well. How do you how do you sort of see that playing out? They've got problems in there. I mean, they those, do. Uh, you know, Post got 20, but a lot of Post damage was making threes. Yep. Once Post tried to get back down in the low post, Miner had it. He was able to contain that. So I think they'll be able to deal a little bit with Burns. The other guy is a little bit, the R is a little bit more of a problem. But, you know, the X factor, Horn gets going. He starts making some of those shots. I mean, offensively. NC State is really a good basketball team. And even though NC State went to Virginia and lost there the last time they played, it did go into overtime. I'd just like to note that. It was a low-scoring affair. Didn't even make it to the 60s or either side. And Virginia ended up winning, but still went into OT. And Virginia actually jumped them early. Yeah. That, in fact, that game looked like it was over at halftime, and NC State battled back in the second half. Here's the only thing, and Coach, this is really for you. When you're a team that has to win close games, and Virginia's used to doing that. Yeah. But you're 349 in the nation making free throws. It, it, that goes counter to everything That's tough. anybody's ever, as a coach, a player, a fan. Hey, if you're going to win close games, I mean, you're going to do the little things. And making free throws has got to be an automatic. Virginia is just god awful at the line. I think it's amazing. Virginia, I think Virginia is the only team could have won some of the games they've had because they're good enough defensively. Even when they miss it, they can get a stop. And then they miss it again, and they get another stop. And, I, I mean, they just have that mentality of we're going to stop you every time. And if, if, if with this game, if North Carolina State played one or two games and they're coming in tonight, I think they win. But the fourth game, I think that's – I think that's going to be hard. Heavy legs, heavy legs. And on the free throws note, Tony Bennett did say last night, he joked, he said, we're just saving him for when we need him. So, so maybe they're going to need him tonight and all of them will go down. He's not saving any. He, he's, he's sitting over there. I had one team like that, and, you know, we just couldn't make him. But the thing is, we were so big and strong that we shot twice as many free throws. Mm. So even though we made 60%, we still made more free throws than everybody we played against. Get the rebound. But you still want to make those free throws down. And right. real quick on this note, just because I've been watching as an observer, right? DJ Horn had been injured coming into this tournament. He's been coming off the bench. You, coach, you're making a game plan. Obviously, he's been a starter for the entire season. You're keeping him coming off the bench? Yeah, I would. If, if I had been coaching in the first game back and he was ready to go, I would have started him. Me yeah. too. But now that he's doing it this way, I would keep that same pattern that they're doing right now. And, and as I said earlier, the reason NC State's playing better is all those other guys have stepped up. Right. And that's why they're a better team right now. We haven't even talked about Taylor. He gets eight. So good. You know. He's been good here as He's of late. He's been so good. Yes, yeah. he has. All right, we've got to take a quick break. Uh, Carlos, you're going to go work on the uh, short game? I'm working on I'm finding my swing pack. He's All taking right. a nap. Yeah, that's what, exactly <laughs> what he's going to do. Uh, Jim Boeheim still going to hang out, though, with us for a little bit. Uh, we're going to come back, and again, it's the 50-year anniversary of what I thought was the greatest ACC basketball game and one of the greatest college games of all time. NC State, Maryland. We'll come back, discuss that a little memory lane. I remember up. it like it was yesterday, I Pat. Was, I, I do. I got a story about it. We'll come back and discuss it. Too. ACC PM. Back to ACCPM live from Washington, D.C. Honest Abe, he's waiting to see who's going to win this year's ACC championship. Who's it going to be? Pitt, North Carolina, UVA, NC State. 
We'll just have to wait and find out. But as we look forward to Saturday night's championship game, we also remember the title game from 50 years ago in 1974. Top five showdown between Maryland and NC State. Lefty Drizel, David Thompson considered the greatest ACC tournament game of all time, maybe the best ACC game ever, period, if you ask Mark Packer. But here's the remarkable part. That game was only one chapter of a historic national title season for the Wolfpack. We're going to take a trip down memory lane with Justin Walters. He has the story. 72. It's unbelievable that we are all able to get together. We're all like brothers to each other. We grew up together, so to speak. We went into battle together, and we were victorious in battle. So it's a great group of guys. They're all champions, and I'm just proud to be a part of that team. They have done it. The Wolfpack has won the national championship. We were 57 and one over a two-year period. Won the first national championship in North Carolina State, and will go down in history as one of the greatest college basketball teams ever. The 1974 NC State Wolfpack finished the regular season 24 and 1, including being undefeated in conference play. But back then, the NCAA tournament had a field of 25, so the Pack still had to win the ACC tournament to get the one and only spot from the ACC into the big dance. There was a lot of pressure on that game. The only one team could represent the conference, and Maryland was probably playing the best basketball of the season. They were ranked number one in the country. We were ranked number four by most polls, and here we are recognizing that one of the four best teams in the nation was not going to go to the NCAA tournament, and certainly we didn't want it to be us. With the season on the line, legendary Maryland head coach Lefty Drizell decided to focus his defense on back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year David Thompson which left seven foot two inch Tommy Burleson with a mismatch. The ball came in to me. I had nobody but Elmore to guard me. I have a, like a five and a half foot drop step. That will move you. He couldn't stop me. I mean, he, he's right there on my hook shot. I mean, he's, he's not going to get up and get it. As many good games as I saw David Thompson play, I don't know that I ever saw a better individual performance than that 38 point game from uh, Tommy Burleson that night. Lefty, he focused on David. He said, David Thompson is not going to beat us. Well, we had two weapons, and that's what made us so dominant. That was a big relief to be able to get past Maryland because we played them so many times in the last couple of years, and every game was close. For some reason, we always found a way to come out victorious. It's all over. The most exciting basketball contest ever played in the ACC. The Wolfpack were ACC champions and cruised to the NCAA Final Four in a rematch against the only team that beat them that season, John Wooden and the UCLA Bruins, winners of seven straight national titles. We're fired up, looking forward to going out to the big guys, going out to UCLA, you know. We didn't really know much about David Thompson at the time. We sure found out on March 23rd 1974. Not that I remember the date. The top two teams in the country, North Carolina State and UCLA. It was a great game, it went back and forth. He gets some long jumpers, he's not that good. Put him up and down the floor now. Second overtime, they run out to a seven point lead and uh, Coach Sloan called timeout. He said, guys, you gotta make something happen. Sure enough, we were able to go out and do it. I drew a charge, David made a steal. Uh, within 30 seconds, we'd cut a seven-point lead to a three-point lead, and now we were back in the game again. David Thompson was the greatest college basketball player I ever played against, by far. I just keep seeing visions of David Thompson <laughs> flying by us and taking what we thought was going to be ours. That was a great comeback to be down by seven with two minutes and 31 seconds left. This is the most dramatic game I've ever been a part of. The Wolfpack of North Carolina State has defeated UCLA. Knocking them off their throne, 
was a great game. They were a great team. But even with that, we still had one game to go before we win the national championship. And that was our goal. Our goal wasn't to beat UCLA. Our goal was to win the national championship. The path to that goal, even to this day, remains remarkable. Winning one of the greatest games in ACC history in overtime. Ending one of the greatest dynasties in sports history in double overtime. But in the season's final game to make their own history, NC State dominated Marquette start to finish to win the school's first national championship. You have a bunch of 18, 19, 20-year-old kids together setting the goal before the year to accomplish something that, that grand and to get it done. You know, it's something you'll never forget. All those guys would be good friends, best friends would be linked for life. We cannot be around each other for years and come back together. It's just like back in 1974. I love those guys. That's my era right there. I've been, I was an NC State fan growing up in the early 70s. Man, they were, uh, again, the Maryland teams were great. Oof. NC State teams, David Thompson. And I still have, I need to give this to the ACC. C.D. Chesley, Sale of the Pilot, all that old school ACC stuff. I have the original C.D. Chesley off the TV truck, eight inch reel, in the box still of that game. It's the only one in the world. It's like Picasso stuff. Wow. That's pretty good. That's worth something. That's worth but, something. But you know, you talk about those guys and we'll, we'll talk about them. I can't talk to her. I'm and listening. We'll tell how good those guys oh, were. And they, my on. son's, go, oh yeah, 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 right. They were. <laughs> They, if they were playing in this game tonight, that David Thompson team, they would stop the game. Mercy, kill at halftime. It would not be competitive. No. no it would not no, be competitive. And no. that's no knock. It's not an no. old school get off my yard stuff. It's just for folks that know, you know. They're guys that played. They were seniors, juniors. They knew what they were doing, and they were super talented. And guys, I don't know if there's something to it, but this team visited with this current NC State team just a couple weeks ago, a few Saturdays ago. As the mojo. They were honored on their home court, gave some advice, some speeches in the locker room, and now you're seeing them playing in the semifinals now. So, All right. They're playing. There you go. They're, They're still really, rocking. Yeah. Coach, go enjoy yourself. I will. Thank right. you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Thanks for always, coming. Always good to be with you. We appreciate it. <laughs> you too, Coach. That's Jim Beheim, media mogul. <laughs> uh, when we come back, hour number two of ACCPM Live from Washington, D.C. Uh, all right, we talked about North Carolina, and we talked about pitch. should be tremendous. The next game, the doubleheader, part two, NC State looking to go W, 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 W. Here's Virginia. Again, Tony Bennett, all they do is they advance. We talked about it 10 consecutive years now in this tournament. Virginia is advanced in the ACC tournament, which is impressive. Absolutely. So what do you think, boys? NC State, Virginia tonight. They split in the regular season. They split the regular season, an overtime win for NC State. Um, you know, oh, overtime win for Virginia, excuse yeah. me. You know, I, I, this, I think this is one of the toughest games we've had so far. NC State seems to be playing so well, has a flow on the offensive end, a confidence about them. My guy, Kevin Keats, I, I went against him picking UVA last night, but I made sure to put the red jacket on because I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> and I think if these guys have the legs, it's interesting to see with minutes being played and how hard guys have had to go, who's really taxed their body, right? DJ Burns, I think he played 11 minutes or so in the first game. DJ Horn, I don't know if Co Kevin Keats is playing checkers while everybody else, or playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Didn't play in the first game against Louisville, got to rest up. So how, how fresh are these guys going to be playing night in and night out like this? But the thing that you mentioned earlier about NC State is they're getting so many contributions from different guys. Everybody who gets in this game, there's nobody who's afraid of the moment. Nobody's saying, I, I don't want that shot. I'm going to pass it back. I mean, when you have guys like O'Connell and Mo Diara and Taylor knocking down shots and playing as confidently as they are, they can absolutely win this game. And then Virginia, obviously they've struggled to score at times. Uh, had to go to overtime against BC. I was really impressed with just their will, their fight to win that game. They just found a way. And the X factor, I mean, we sat up here for a while and talked about, you know, Reese Beekman kind of was MVP of that game. But to me, Minor and his defense on Quentin Post, who was absolutely terrorizing yeah. this tournament, was so good down the stretch in that game. But you know, you see a guy like Quentin Post take those back down dribbles, and he's so big and so strong. Can't move him. 
Miner was a brick wall. <laughs> he went absolutely nowhere. The defensive play was the play of the game where Quentin Post, seven footer, turns around to shoot a fadeaway jumper over Jordan Miner, ah. and he just mushed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just, it wasn't even a block. He could have got that thing with his elbow. It was <laughs> impressive, big time. They have just found a way. So this matchup's going to be awesome. Anything stand out to you, Joel? Yeah, I just saw uh, for, for Virginia, what makes me worried about them is offensively. I know defensively they get after you in in that in the last uh, half of that game, they were getting after uh, they were getting after BC. Um, and they, they, BC couldn't score. Yeah. But my, I was looking at the offensive end and just those lulls and then the free throw line is what, what, what worried me. It was like they were just getting to the free throw line and they were missing shots and they were missing shots and they made it tough for themselves. For Virginia, that's the key for me moving forward. Um, this next game and moving forward throughout the, the rest of the season is them scoring offensively. And that's the that's the problem for me. For NC State, they have to get in front of the defense. They have to play in the open court. I think when Virginia is able to play um, against you in the half court on the defensive end, they really, they really stop you from penetrating. They stop a lot of the things that you want to do for NC State. I don't think they're the best team in the half court. I think they're at their best when they're getting turnovers, they're creating turnovers, they're getting, they're getting out in the open court. They're pl kind of playing that second offense where the offense doesn't start until the ball hits the basket. That's that type of NC State team, and I think that's what they need to be best at tonight. Again, doubleheader tonight. That is game two. NC State trying to win another one. Again, no team has ever played five games in five days in the ACC tournament. NC State's a win away from doing that and getting to the finals for the first time since 07 in Virginia. Uh, they've been down this road before. We talked about Tony Bennett's teams always well prepared when it comes to postseason play. Should be fun tonight. All right, let's get the picks. Everybody can't wait to hear what we got to say when it comes to picks. Uh, first, let's go with the second game first. NC State, the 10 seed, looking to win their fourth consecutive game to match the Washington Wizards in this building this year. Uh, they take on Virginia. They split in the regular season. All right, who's in the mood to go first? Who's going first? I I'll, I'll take it. I think, all right, go ahead, Joe. I'll take it. I'm going to go NC State in this one. I'm going to go four for four. I think they, the way that they're playing right now, and the one thing I like about this tournament is that you get to keep that mo that mojo. You get to keep that confidence, and I think they're just playing really well right now, especially those other pieces. I know we keep harping on it, but I really think this, t this, this has taken this team to the next level with being able to have that addition to DJ Burns and DJ Horn and what they're doing. So I'm going State. All right. I love State. I love Coach Keats. That's my guy. I think they played fantastic this entire tournament. I was so in on BC and what they did against Clemson. They were outrageous, but I think they got worn down by Virginia, especially in the second half of that game. I think you're just playing so many consecutive days. You're having to put so much effort out there that I think Virginia wears them down and finds a way to win this game. But, man, I would love for them to shock the world and keep this thing rolling. All right, so let's go on Virginia. I have, can I get the camera? Oh, yeah. I got an apology to NC State. I believed in you for the two first games, and I hope you saw that. It was me and nobody else. And then yesterday, I went Duke because I lost a little faith, but I want you to know it's not you, it was me. And I'm back, and I'd like to. It was that to, guy in his shirt behind you. I would like to <laughs> reconcile. Yeah, I don't know Talk what's going on. Yeah, this guy was wearing avocados he yesterday. He's wearing bananas today. I'm going with NC State. I'm back on the Pac bandwagon. All right, I'm just going to tell you right up front uh, my picks stink. They always stink, but I'm going to take Virginia tonight because I just think. Tony Bennett is the best coach in the league. And you know what? They'll just find a way, even though they can't beat me from the free throw line. <laughs> All right, we got one minute left for the first one tonight. North Carolina and Pittsburgh, Joel. I think you know who I'm going with here, Pat. Pat. Uh, shock the world. Uh, yeah, I'm going <laughs> UNC here. I just think they're playing really well last night. I think or uh, right now, the way that they came out against FSU off of a double bye, they look very impressive. So I'm going to go with Carolina. Pitt's great. They're a tournament team. UNC is as is playing as good as anyone, period. I got UNC. All right. I'm going North Carolina, too. We moved the tournament out of North Carolina, and we're going to get a Tobacco Road final, in my opinion. That's where oh, I'm leaning. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah. Well, I'll mention this again. Back in 2016, the last time we were in Washington, D.C., we had an ACC championship game between North Carolina and Virginia. 
history repeats itself, boys and girls. I think we're going to have North Carolina and Virginia tomorrow night. And we got an MVP right there. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It was a crazy game. It was pegged out. So I guarantee it. It's going to be great tonight, yeah. too. Again, great job by all the smart people back in Bristol. Great staff, as usual, for all the gang here. Folks, enjoy the softball and the baseball and everything else. Catch you. Alan Kevin back with you. It's Champ Week, and it's also the start of the holy month of Ramadan, a time when Muslims across the world fast as an act of their faith. Several Muslim college basketball players are currently playing while fasting, including NC State's Muhammad Diara, who's been a real spark for the Wolfpack at this week's ACC tournament. Coley Harvey has more on Diara in tonight's Sports Center report. Uh oh, uh oh, Diara. Is right as he goes for the slam and is screamed out. Believe it or not, in that energizing moment, North Carolina State forward Muhammad Diara had not had anything to eat or drink, not even water, for more than 13 hours. But minutes after the dunk and just after the sun had set in Washington, D.C., that would change as team nutritionist Jesse McGinley handed him a gel pack of slow digesting carbohydrates. So that's kind of the first thing that kind of I give him. And then the banana allows glucose to kind of go up a little bit. And then we kind of supplement with sodium and Gatorade and all of those things combined. Diara is currently observing the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. He's been fasting from sunup to sundown since Ramadan began this past Sunday. And he'll continue to do so until the month of fasting ends April 9th. In the 10 months since Diara transferred from Missouri, McGinley and NC State support staff have been laser focused on his hydration. He is a really heavy sweater. And so going into this, we just with our sweat test data and everything, we really knew like what we were up against. And then as we got closer to the tournament time and I was able to come up with a plan to kind of mitigate the fasting situation. Including his double-double in Thursday's quarterfinal win over Duke, Diara has been playing some of his best basketball this week. It's a month of faith. Right? You got to put your trust in God a lot. And I think that's why I play so, so well right now. I'm sure. I, I don't think okay. I'm sure. <laughs> Mo is the X factor for this team. Uh, when he wants to play like Mo, and uh, I, I just need him to keep playing like that. So I hope Ramadan is ending no time soon. <laughs> keep his little mojo going. But uh, I think we're, we're really cutting at the right time. It's a whole month, by the way. So, oh, yeah. Great. Uh, but <laughs> Since Friday's tip off is two hours after sunset, DR's nutritional approach in this game will be different. McGinley says he'll have a pregame IV, an acai bowl, and maybe a bagel to give him energy until he can have a much bigger meal later. I'm Coley Harvey. ESPN. Coley, thank you so much. You can catch Diara and the Wolfpack in the ACC tournament semis on ESPN2 later tonight against Virginia. NC State last made the ACC championship game in 2007. We got Pitt in North Carolina, the other semifinal game. That tips off at 7 Eastern. This is the granddaddy of all conference tournaments. The Wolfpack is kind of having a Cinderella story going on. I feel like it's right there for the taking. We winning tonight, good feeling tonight, killing haters, whole vibe with a smile. Got it! This is the greatest conference tournament in the country. Hello. Impressive as anything. Fans enjoying this one. Oh, it goes for Blake Hinson. This is a dangerous, talented team to watch. They have brought the fight to the Blue Devils. Horn at the horn. Slam. The Cavaliers are into the semifinals. An ACC championship is on the line. The action continues here in Washington, D.C., the home this year of the ACC men's tournament. What did we have an intense first game as Carolina defeated Pitt 72 to 65 to advance to the final. And here comes Cinderella, if you will, the 10 seed, NC State. They played Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They say they're not done yet. Welcome to ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. This is the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by T. Rowe Price. Earlier tonight, R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott went off in the second half. Carolina, which trailed Pitt by as many as nine early, wins by seven, and they're looking to win their first ACC Tournament Championship since 2016 when they did it in this very building.
But still to come, the second semifinal. What a contrast in styles. Number three seed Virginia playing their second game. Number 10 to the 10 seed NC State. The Wolfpack playing its fourth game in as many nights. Something to keep an eye on. How will the legs be for the pack tonight? Reese Beekman, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, second team all-conference. He and Ryan Dunn leading the way for the Hoos here in D.C. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis. I love the difference in styles, the contrast. NC State wants to keep the magic going, win a title tomorrow night. Virginia sitting last four in, says Joey Brackets. They want to lock this up. NC State's got a little cardiac pack feel, yeah, don't they? Yeah. Trying to win an ACC championship here in Washington, D.C. But NC State is going to have to deal with the slower pace of Virginia. And that means they're going to have to guard for extended periods in the half court. They have to stay attached to Isaac McNeely. He's their best shooter. You've got to be with him and not allow him threes, which are momentum plays. And for Virginia, they run a mover blocker offense. Tony Bennett calls it sides. And they need to look for slip screen opportunities to get to the basket. This is a team that is not going to send more than two guys. They're four and five to the offensive glass and three back because they want to take away NC State's transition. Let's go to Jess Sims for more. Hey team, when I asked Coach Keats how the Wolfpack is feeling about their fourth game in four days, he looked at me and said, I don't know, because I haven't talked to them about it on purpose and I've advised my coaching staff to do the same. But even if they aren't mentally aware, their bodies are definitely feeling it. Coach Keats said they've been keeping the same routine of early walkthroughs so they can get off their feet for the rest of the day. And they have a huge team of trainers, doctors, massage therapists, strength coaches, and a nutritionist on the road with them to make sure everyone is feeling their best so that they can win their fourth consecutive ACC tournament game for the first time in their program's history. Jess, thank you. Great stuff. 2014 was when the ACC expanded to the point where you had to have games on Tuesday. This is the first time that somebody who played on Tuesday has made it to Friday. And the Wolfpack saying, we want to be here tomorrow night as well. Let's see what happens. Virginia controlling the tip. Reese Beekman, the senior, just a terrific year, leading the conference in assists. And how impressive is that, given the low tempo, and I mean dead last in the nation, with which Virginia plays? Fewer possessions, but he still leads the league in assists. Well, Reese Beekman, there's an assist right there if McNeely knocks it down. And you cannot leave Isaac McNeely. We talked about it in the open. He is their best shooter. When he knocks down threes, Virginia is a different offensive team. It's a team that can struggle to score but not as much when he's banging shots down. What has NC State done well this week to still be playing here tonight? They have gotten excellent contributions from this guy, Casey Morcel, and then Mohamed Diara has been rebounding as a foreman. He's able to switch out on guards, and Michael O'Connell has turned into a scorer in this tournament. He is 6 of 8 from 3, and he's had double-figure scoring games. Tony Bennett's won a national championship. He's also won two ACC tournament championships got to the final in this building in 2016 lost to Carolina turnaround by DJ Burns won't go and back come the Hoos and that's going to be a wrestling match Jordan Miner going against DJ Burns Miner a guy who gave Virginia some very good minutes second half and overtime last night 40 minutes wasn't enough they needed 45 minutes before they took care of Boston College in the quarters got to keep an eye on McNeely Another good read by Isaac McNeely. NC State tried to gap that screen on the baseline, so he just faded into the corner. He doesn't miss many of those. He is an excellent three-point shooter. Shoots 44% from threes, made 75 threes on the year after that first one went down. Virginia 23-9, and 13-7 and seven in the league, the three seed, a net of just 50, though, two and six in quad one, neutral court over Florida at Clemson. They didn't do what some of the other teams in this league did. They didn't beat Carolina. They didn't beat Duke. They don't have a ton of wins that just jump off the page at you, but they have Jay won 23 times this year. They beat Florida early in the year, only played Duke and Carolina once, which is unusual. Diara, an air ball on the three. Well, he's made 17 threes on the year, but that was not the best quality of shot that NC State could have gotten. They were off the first pass, launching that up. Tane Murray is starting a game he's a junior starting a game for the first time in his career 
Played very well in their regular season finale and then played very well last night against BC and Tony Bennett put him in the starting lineup tonight. Viara went flying. Burns backing down his man and laying it in. Miner is strong, but is there anybody who can keep Burns from backing you down when he really wants well, to? Well, it's a choice that Tony Bennett is making, usually in the pack line defense. Virginia will send a double team when the ball goes into the post, but DJ Burns catches it so far off the post, they're deciding not to double from a long stretch. Beautiful pass from Beekman to Ryan Dunn for the flush. That was a little screen in that sides mover blocker offense by Ryan Dunn. And you put two on the ball, and that little pocket pass is really difficult to deal with. Dunn, the 6'8 sophomore from Freeport, New York. Outstanding athlete, also a member of the all-defensive team in the ACC. I think you're going to see Virginia try to run a lot of slip action off of screening. O'Connell into Diara, turns to face on McNeely. Good help by Dunn. It will stay with NC State. Now take a look at the right side of the floor here. You can see Ryan Dunn setting a little screen for Reese Beekman. Now when he sets this screen, Beekman pops out. Then when he drives it to go on the ball, that little pocket pass in between the two defenders and an easy score for one of the best defenders in the country, Ryan Dunn. DJ Horn is checked in for the Wolfpack as Morcell knocks down the jumper as the shot clock was expiring. Horn, a fascinating guy for State, leading score on the team, is back from a hip injury. Didn't play Tuesday night against Louisville. They won without him. Did play the last two nights, got more and more minutes, started the second half last night, and he may not be 100%, Jay, but he's still really, really good. And they like him coming off the bench. The save at midcourt by Murray. Well, Isaac McNeely playing with an ankle injury, twisted an ankle on Tuesday, and he was a game-time decision for the BC game. Tipped out. Done the extra pass. And now, as is always the case, Virginia not in a hurry at the offensive end of the floor. Good fade screen. Murray misses the three. The tip winds up in the hands of Jordan Miner, and he lays it in. By Ryan Dunn able to knock that ball to Miner for the easy bucket. NC State was right there for the rebound. You just got to grab it. They split their two regular season meetings, both in January, each winning on its own home court. Virginia needed overtime to win their game. Burns again. And we'll have a Virginia foul here going against Ryan Dunn. Boy, how do you guard D.J. Burns on a back down? It's like trying to guard a dump truck when it's parking. <laughs> he's a big fella, but he's got great hands and sweet feet, and he can pile up the points if you don't double him. And Jordan Miner is a big guy himself, but D.J. Burns makes him look small. The lefty with the easy bucket. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Well, Virginia's had some great teams over the years. Three ACC tournament championships, 1976, and then two under Tony Bennett, 2014-2018. Neither one coming in the year where they won the national championship. That was 2019. They are trying to get back to the title game. They've been in the semis eight of the last ten years. Bigger picture, are they in? Do they need this one to get in? Joey Brackets has them last four in right now. Uh, Pitt, a very interesting team. Joe lenardi has got them first four out. They played Carolina tough. Came up on the short end in the semifinals. Big jigsaw puzzle, lots of moving parts. All you can worry about, winning the game you're playing. Well, that first photo in that array of that 1976 ACC Tournament Championship team for Virginia. What a good pass by Reese Beekman. You saw the great Gene Corrigan, former athletic director at Virginia, Notre Dame, was the commissioner of the ACC. There wasn't a better administrator in college athletics than Gene Corrigan. So tell me a little bit about the Ralph Sampson era and how one of the, uh, the greatest college basketball players ever, and you played in... 
one of those years? Uh, you overlap by one year. I yeah, we played. Right? Yeah. I played against him three times, and my yeah. therapist says I don't have to talk <laughs> about it anymore. <laughs> All right, so let's leave you out of it, as difficult as that is for you. And let's talk a little bit about that era of ACC basketball. I mean, that was a great Virginia team, obviously. What was it like in those days? How tough was this tournament? Well, people my age like to talk about the 80s and early 90s being the golden age of college basketball, especially in the ACC because players like Ralph Sampson stayed for four years. Michael Jordan left early, stayed for three. But the league was by then fully integrated. You know, in the 60s it was not. But just a, a magical time with so many great coaches. And yep. you made all ACC, you were a lottery pick. More teams now, of course. Nine when you played, correct? Eight. Eight when you played. Fifteen now. And we are down to three in this year's edition with Carolina awaiting the winner of this one. A couple of subs in for Virginia. Andrew Rohde has checked in. Jake Groves as well, who had a very nice game for the Cavs last night of the win over BC. Yeah, had 15 points, 11 rebounds, four of them offensive rebounds. He was a huge reason that Virginia was able to get past Boston College in overtime. So at the line, Reese Beekman, the senior from Milwaukee, and what an outstanding four years he has had. Last night against BC, he didn't shoot it well. Four for 17, but 11 points, 11 assists to tie a career high, seven rebounders. He's a great defender. He played 43 of the 45 minutes, Jay, 24 hours ago. Can't believe they took him out for those two minutes. <laughs> but Reese Beekman's truly one of the great defenders in college basketball, and he's playing with another one of the truly great defenders in Ryan Dunn. I mean, if Ryan Dunn were named ACC Defensive Player of the Year, I don't think there would have been any surprise. Yep. Those two were 1-2 yep. in voting. So Beekman, the first guy to win it two years in a row in over a decade. Kevin Keats has brought in Ben Middlebrooks. Also, Jaden Taylor has checked back in. And this is the guy you really got to keep an eye on, DJ Horn. Diara will take another three, and this time he'll hit it. An under control three for Diara. That's his 18th three on the season. And how good was he against Duke? 16 rebounds and four blocks to go along with 14 points. And didn't he have 14 boards the night before against Syracuse? Yeah, he's been spectacular. Rose just dribbled it into a double team, and Middlebrooks takes it away. NC State is going to have to get things out of the second action because Virginia is so good at guarding the first. Great feed by O'Connell to Middlebrooks to send him to the free throw line. It's a good job by NC State and DJ Harn of making that little throwback and Groves has to close out with a hand up to discourage that shot. That was just a little bit too easy for Mohamed Diara. And this has been a struggle at times for NC State, but it's really a struggle mm -hmm. for Virginia. Virginia, one of the poorest free throw shooting teams in the country. 362 teams, 354 at the Cavs. Middlebrooks at the line as Morcel checks back in. How about as NC State is trying to close out the game last night against Duke and Middlebrooks misses a dunk, hangs on the rim, and is called for a technical. So instead of getting two, they don't get any, and then a free throw at the other end, and probably took a couple of years off the life of Kevin Keats watching that, but he did tell us this morning, you know, because we won, I gave him a hug. He said, had we lost, the conversation would have been a little bit different. I love all my players, but uh, they could smile about it a little bit after. But, boy, that was a moment where if you were a Wolfpack fan, I mean, you probably couldn't believe what you were seeing. Well, they were very fortunate at NC State that they had the possession arrow because right. after hanging on the rim, it goes to the possession arrow. It wasn't just a, a basket interference call. What did you like about State the most in their win over Duke last night? Because they've got so much fight right now, and they're getting contributions. Like, the contributions from Michael O'Connell have been fantastic. What a great pocket pass. And Diara muscles it up and in. Boy, the open side screen and roll. There's nobody there in the corner, so you don't have a tag defender. And that was a beautiful pass. You know, it's funny. This is a 10 seed against a 3 seed. I don't know about you, but in my mind, this kind of felt like a pick -em game coming in because the Wolfpack are playing so well right now. No question. And, but anytime you play against Virginia, they're so hard to play against, kind of like quicksand. 
Boston College found that out in the second half. A deep, deep three around and out for Andrew Rohde, the 6'6 sophomore from Milwaukee. And as soon as that shot goes up, three Cavaliers are sprinting back. Horn. And Rohde runs down the loose ball. Virginia Games, the slowest tempo in the country. Very few whistles, very few fouls, and generally quite low scoring. But really physical. This is a physical defense. Great cut. And the lay-in for McNeely. You think of him more shooting the three, but a nice cut to get a layup. It is so important to stay attached to Isaac McNeely, but he has improved as a cutter. More a catch-and-shoot guy last year. But his cutting is dangerous. Morcel, his first two years in Charlottesville. Now his third year with the Wolfpack. Middlebrooks gets it to go. Now Middlebrooks, they can come and double. But Virginia deciding against it. One-on-one -on -one in the post. One of the toughest things to guard in basketball. And are the Middlebrooks minutes vital just to get Burns a little bit of rest in their fourth game in as many nights? No question. Dante Harris in the game, former Georgetown Hoya, and he's from right here in Washington, D.C. McNeely open in the corner. Can't leave him. You just can't leave him. Set a little screen and then went right to the corner. There were two on the ball. You just can't afford to leave Isaac McNeely alone. 44% from three on the season and a wolf pack foul to take us into the timeout. Then Middlebrooks getting it down on the inside, giving State some good minutes in the middle as he muscles one up and in to bank at home. And on the other end, Casey Morcel using the ball screen, a little slip to the basket by Diara, and another bucket. We're here in Washington at the ACC Tournament. The SEC Tournament is in Nashville. The top seed, Tennessee, out in the quarters. Mississippi State defeated by 17. Auburn blows out South Carolina. Huge win for the Aggies over Kentucky. Early on, Alabama's got a six-point lead on Florida. That game over on the SEC Network. After Tennessee lost today to Mississippi State, I heard someone say that no team has ever won the national championship when they lost in the quarterfinals of their tournament. So that that's bad news for Kentucky They're, and Tennessee. Uh, yes. <laughs> Here a 14-14 tie just past the midway point. The winner to play the Tar Heels tomorrow night. Throws with the shot fake. Shot clocks at three. Harris knows it, drives it, and blocked from behind. That's Breon Pass, who made a terrific defensive play. Which the shot clock negated a little transition opportunity. I wonder what the over-under on the first transition bucket's going to be in this one. I'll give you a choice. First half or second <laughs> half? What do you think? Or there's, there's door number three, which is not at all. Might be the title yeah. game. <laughs> Burns remains on the bench. Middlebrooks still in the game. Pass getting some minutes. Finds Middlebrooks, who reverses it up and in. Good play by both of them. Well, nice shot fake and drive to get in the lane by Breon Pass. You don't see Virginia give up the lane that often, but it drew help, and he was able to dump it off to Middlebrooks. And he is not necessarily a guy who plays in every single game for the Wolfpack, but again, remember, fourth game in as many nights for the pack so maybe uh, Kevin Keats will go about his rotation just a little bit differently their energy looks pretty good though Horn and a goaltending call count the basket and there's a transition bucket with good hands by NC State to cause that turnover this is a very low turnover team but Reese Beekman took it into trouble the active hands of NC State giving them a, a rare run out against Virginia
Boy, one team likes to play so methodically, and the other team likes to speed it up whenever they can. It's such a contrast in styles. With NC State switching a lot of these exchanges, I think really good pass. Anytime you curl that action, if you put two on the ball, they're going to find the screener. But I think slips are going to be open for Virginia off that action. With switching, you can slip it, but you can also screen your own man, which makes it difficult for the switch. Good pass. Taylor finds Middlebrooks, and what a night Ben Middlebrooks is having so far. Where Virginia is getting beat on some of that open side pick and roll. And usually there's someone there in the middle of the lane. Isaac McNeely needs to stop and be there. Ryan Dunn not there either. That's just way too easy after the screen because there's nobody there in that right corner. That's awfully difficult to guard to pick up that roll man. And again, these Middlebrooks minutes are vital for State. D.J. Burns is not a 32-34 minute a game guy. Certainly not with the fourth game in as many days. Jaden Taylor putting good pressure on the ball. Groves knocks it down and gets the Hoos back within two. Well, he can really shoot. It shoots about 48% from three. That's his 49th three of the season. Two years at Eastern Washington, two at Oklahoma now, spending his last year in Charlottesville. Yeah, Groves played with his brother Tanner Groves at Eastern Washington. Tanner was the Big Sky Player of the Year. What a beautiful pass to Ben Middlebrooks. They are really moving the ball well. And they're doing a good job of rolling off those screens and finding openings. But it is really difficult to complete those passes against Virginia. This is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Top scoring defense in the ACC. Pass deflected. Dunn tips it out to Beekman. And skying for the rebound is Pass, who's giving State some energetic minutes. Beekman just a 33% three-point shooter. Middlebrooks. Here comes the help. And that pass was in the air a long time, and it's deflected out of bounds to Virginia. Well, Reese Beekman leads the ACC in assists. He's second in steals, but does a great job here of finding Jake Groves for the open three. Good screen by Isaac McNeely to free him up, and then Michael O'Connell on the other end coming off that screen and roll, just getting it beautifully to Ben Middlebrooks for the finish. Welcome back to D.C. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Jess Sims. Second semifinal here for the ACC tournament. All a part of Champ Week presented by Principal. The 10 seed, the Wolfpack, are still going in the semis the third time that they, fifth time that anybody, has made the semis as a 10 seed or lower. NC State has the third most ACC tournament championships of anybody in this league. Now, they're an original member, of course, but they've won 10 of them. But none since 1987, and Jay have not been to the championship game even since 2007. This would mean a lot for this program if they could win this game tonight. No question. And a proud NC State tradition started by Everett Case back when they played the ACC tournament at Reynolds Coliseum. DJ Burns back in for State. Jordan Miner back in for Virginia. Reese Beekman knocks it down. Beekman now with four points. He's also got four assists already in this game. Virginia back within two. Just played with great pace coming off that screen. Got Jaden Taylor on his backside. Just kept him in jail. NC State has executed very well in the half court. They're finding the roll man and pick and roll action. And so far, Virginia deciding not to double the post. Look at that screen. My wow. goodness. That was like running into the Lincoln Memorial team. Yeah. Murray. He got up about as quickly as he went down, but he went down hard after getting run into by DJ Burns. Talk about the immovable object. Huh. Beekman using a screen from Miner. 
who can't get it to go. And it belongs to O'Connell and State. The Miners got to knock that down. They're looking to attack DJ Burns when they can in that screening action. Make him defend and recover. Everything revolves around Burns when he's in the game. A ton of post touches. They're not doubling. And a foul is called on Minor. That looked like more of an offensive discard from DJ Burns. He pushed off with that right arm. Now watch a push off here. And that, that's a foul on Minor. Tony Bennett was begging for an explanation. Look where Burns has to get it all the way deep in the corner trying to work his way in the lefty up and in how do you stop that it's like trying to guard a taxi cab and as you said the decision is do you let him get his or do you double him but he's a good passer and then you open yourself up to being vulnerable to three that's the problem is you, it takes him a while to get that shot off so there's time coming off the clock but it makes the other guys stand around. And so you're not having DJ Horn launch threes and DJ Horn has made 91 threes on the year. Jaden Taylor, a little bit short, tipped out and Beekman's got it for Virginia. One of the advantages that Virginia has, they play in close games all the time. Yeah, they've had a lot of narrow victories. They've gone on the road a lot this year and kind of gotten blown out, but their wins have been very close. So they're not they're not phased by having to execute in late games. Right. It's just where they live. They did it last night against BC in the quarters. It's probably why Tony Bennett has some gray hairs, but I'm jealous anyway. Yes, as we pointed out to him at shoot around today, hard for you and I to have any empathy. <laughs> we would trade places in a heartbeat. Four point lead state, four minutes to go, first half. Diara called for the foul. DJ Burns is hard to stop. When he gets a little momentum, forget it. He's going to score with that left hand, and he's also hard to move. Hello. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let our expertise round out yours. It's been a great few days here in Washington for the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament. From 15 schools down to three at this point, the Tar Heels awaiting the winner of either the Wolfpack or the Cavs. Uh, NC State beat Louisville Tuesday, beat Syracuse Wednesday, beat Duke last night. Virginia needed overtime to beat BC last night. And right now, Dan, NC State has been executing very well on the offensive end. The pack shooting 58%, and they've got 18 points in the paint. That second action is getting Ben Middlebrooks free. McNeely misses the step in jumper, Burns saves it. You mentioned it, O'Connell has broken out offensively. He only averages about five points per game, but he's been in double figures in all three games in this tournament, 16, 16, and 12. Yeah, he scored 44 points. He's 14 of 22 from the field in the tournament, six of eight from three. And he made seven threes in the prior 17 games coming into Washington, D.C. Brad transfer from Stanford. Pass knocked away. Miners got it for Virginia. O'Connell threw that pass to Diara instead of away from the defense, and Miner was able to take that away. You got to pass away from the defense. Miner the screen. Beekman the three. And it's a one point game. Just too easy. Horn had to go under instead of chasing Beekman over and inside of that three point line. That is the fourth three of the night for the Hoos. State's only got one. 
Now watch this pass into Mohamed Diara. The pass went right to him instead of throwing it away from the defense. You have to throw it to his right hand. And then watch DJ Horn here going under the screen, got caught up on Miner, and that just gave an easy three to Reese Beekman. Morsell, that's a tough shot. It rattles out, and it'll be Virginia ball with a chance to take the lead. Lots of fans from both schools here. Uh, Virginia is the closest, about two and a half hours away. Raleigh's about four, four and a half hours away. And so great representation for everybody still going here to the ACC as Beekman gets it done again. So patient coming off that ball screen just off the left elbow. He got DJ Horn caught up on it. And instead of blasting off of it, Horn goes over this one. And he goes instead of he just kind of plays with him a little bit, backs up, and then goes right at DJ Burns, who's not necessarily going to jump. He just reached in. Really expert use of the screen and roll by Reese Beekman. Now Ben Middlebrooks comes back in the game. Middlebrooks has been really good as a pick and roll roller. He's got 10 points. He's 4 of 4 from the field. Just the first on Burns, but he sits. Morsell can't get into the paint. I used to say that playing against Virginia was like being at a two-hour dental appointment, but dentists got really upset with me. Yeah. Bang home by O'Connell. Yeah, he's having himself quite a tournament. But now I refer to playing against Virginia as like being in quicksand. You can move around at first, but sooner or later, you're going to yeah. be up to your neck. Yep. Tied at 27. Beekman again. Minor. And a jump the ball. ball is the call. And the possession arrow will give it to the Wolfpack. That was a foul on Diara. Watch this. Like, this is not legal guarding position. That's a foul. So the tie-up was actually Middlebrooks down low, but that was after Diara went flying. Connell tries to turn the corner. McNeely stays in front of him. Final minute of the first half. How do you get away from Reese Beekman? Blocked by Dunn, one of the better shot blockers in the ACC. Got to get it up. O'Connell knows it. Shot clock violation. One of the Who's fans' favorite things. They didn't call it no, shot clock No, they didn't call violation. it. They kept it live. Heard the horn, but they kept it going. Here comes McNeely. So good off those curls. Little fade screen. Well defended by Diara. Brody in the corner misses the three. It's tipped by Dunn, and Miner lays it in. Marcel was trying to block out Dunn, and Dunn was just able to get a hand on it. So did Marcel, but it went right to Miner for an easy bucket. A good block out. But just a, a heady play by Ryan Dunn. And a timeout with 20 seconds to go here in a two point game in semifinal number two. Coming up tonight after the game, about 11.30 Eastern time, the Nothing But Net crew will have a complete breakdown of tonight's semifinal action. Carolina's win over Pitt in the first one, and then a look at this game as well, which as expected is close. It is a two-point lead right now for Virginia with 19.8 seconds to go. Carlos Boozer, Luke Hancock, Joel Berry's around there somewhere. Kelsey Riggs is over there. There's Joel Berry. What a great career he had at North Carolina. Not a winner, but a champion. Most outstanding player of this tournament in this building in 2016. Shot clock turned off. 
I don't think you can wait too long to get in some action because sometimes the second action is what's going to get you something against this great Virginia defense. Fouls to give, a common occurrence in a Virginia game, so McNeely gives one. And they can do it one more time. If you know they're going to give one, get into your shooting motion as quickly as you can. O'Connell drives, switches hands, wow. and lays it in. That was impressive. And that layup right at the end of the first half makes it a tie game, 29-29, between NC State and Virginia. Michael O'Connell just made a little crossover to get by Isaac McNeely and goes right around one of the best shot blockers in the country and Ryan Dunn Jess and gets with, it to go. Jess is with Tony Bennett. Coach, Beekman's patience on the offensive end really helped you guys late in that first half. What else do you need to continue seeing on that end? Well, I think, you know, they guard you real physical. We got Reese off with some ball screens and that helped. Um, I hate ending the half like that. That's frustrating. But our guys are battling and they're laying it in there and laying it down and uh, we just got to be tough. Burns poses a problem, as everyone knows. We haven't gone in trap. Hopefully he's getting worn down, but we just got to be as sound and tough and win it on the defensive end and be sound enough offensively. Speaking of the defensive end, Ben Middlebrooks has been causing a lot of problems. What adjustments do you need to see on him? Yeah, we had a bad matchup. I hit physicality bothered Jake a little bit and we didn't help a couple times so again fight his catches and make him earn and that's what this kind of is about at this time of the year. Thank you so much for your time. All tied up at 29 at halftime with a winner to take on the Tar Heels tomorrow night of the championship game. Let's send you cross court along with Andrea Carter and Seth Greenberg. We say hello to Reese Davis. Hello Dan one spot left. ACC tournament final winner gets North Carolina, NC State, and Virginia all tied up at 29. NC State, Tony Bennett alluded to it. Will they have the legs? Will DJ Burns have the legs to follow through with their fourth game in four days? But so far, the Wolfpack has shown enough energy on offense, Andrea. Well, my girl Jess Sims set me up perfectly asking about Ben Middlebrooks because it was Middlebrooks and DR that I was so impressed with in the first half. Their ability to set good screens to roll to the basket. Listen, in the first two matchups, those two didn't combine for more than eight points. They combined for 15 points in the first half. Strong physical finishes. And the plus side of this is if Virginia makes adjustments to start to play NC State's pro players, it's going to open up opportunities for NC State's guards. So that aggression and the strong finishes of the Wolfpack post players can set them up in the second half for the guards to get loose. Yeah, Tony talked about they haven't decided to double the post yet, but they might. There's always they might. Now, look, when I look at NC State, ball pressure buys time. So when you're playing against Virginia, they run all that mover blocker. If you put great pressure on the basketball, it buys time for those guys to chase those guys off those screens. But in the ball screen situations with Reese Beekman, you cannot melt. Because if he gets two on the ball, it's over. He turns the corner and makes a play. Those are two things to watch in the second half. Beekman's so good. Oh, my goodness. He, he's had a great first half. He's got 10. So does Middlebrooks. And I'm really glad to see Middlebrooks have a big first half after that after near disaster of the missed <laughs> dunk in the technical against Duke last night. North Carolina and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh played their tails off, tied the game at 62. But you know who's going to get it now. Turn down the screen from Baycott, R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis at 19 in the second half. Give a city guard the ball at the end of the game. He goes and makes a play. He was terrific, but so was Carolina's defense in the second half. Armando Baycott, between his footwork and his vision out of the double team, just a phenomenal duo. Those two, they wanted the big moments. They showed up when it mattered the most. They also had a ton of help from their role players. And I put role here because yeah. any of those guys can step up. But defensively and energy-wise, UNC got everything they needed against a good pit team. Ingram in trouble with terrific defense. Well, Ingram, the job he did on Henson in trouble, did a good job in the second half on Carrington. Yep. Those two guys would put a, put a hurt on you, and they got taken out of the game in the second half. The growth of Tremble, if he adds a shot to that explosive athleticism, Ooh. and he's, he's been solid at times making shots. He wasn't he's born yet. That's Alabama crazy. Alabama and Florida in a battle right now, too. Smart Alec. <laughs> So here's what Joe Lenardi has cooking. Seth mentioned the Pac-12 situation. Colorado plays tonight. Virginia's playing right now in the game you're watching, sitting right there. So there are nervous teams. And he has Pittsburgh among the first four out.
Virginia returning to the floor right behind us. Tied game. What do you expect, second half? If I'm Kevin Keats, I'm saying we need your career bleeping best effort. You cannot melt on ball screens, and we must pressure the basketball. If you're on the opposite side for Virginia, you're saying wear NC State out. Work in the half-court offense. Make them move and length if you're a race beat. We ain't backing down. Let a naysayer know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. This is the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by T. Rowe Price. Terrific minutes off the bench for Ben Middlebrooks. Ten points, three rebounds, a steal, and a block for the Wolfpack in the first half. Reese Beekman leading the way for the Hoos with ten points and four assists. Also a steal in the first half, and it is dead even. 29 29 going to the second half really kind of what you expect when you see a Virginia game they make other teams play their pace and the pace is slow and you're going to have to get used to it and NC State has done a good job with 20 points in the paint but screening action has been important for both teams now you've seen Ryan Dunn setting a screen here DJ Horn has to go over excuse me Jaden Taylor has to go over it Casey Morcell has to help too long that's a wide open pocket pass and then the side screen and roll on the open side Middlebrooks rolls to the basket and this pack line defense just not packed in the paint and Middlebrooks able to get all the way to the bucket. You mentioned Middlebrooks has those 10 points. I think Virginia's got to do a better job of protecting the painted area on those screen and roll actions. Jess spoke to Kevin Keats. Coach Keats definitely agrees with both of you guys. He said to me coming out of the locker room, he said, hey, this is a much slower paced game than we're used to. Virginia loves to drain the clock, but we need to learn how to win every kind of game. So the focus this half will be cleaning up some things like better coverage on Beekman and McNeely. They have 18 out of their 29 points. Jess, thank you. And again, the third game between these two, they split a pair during the regular season. DJ Horn starts the second half. We talked before the broadcast. Defender fell down. Now Reese Beekman with an easy layup. But we talked before the game started about staying with Isaac McNeely. He had a couple open threes in that first half. That cannot happen for NC State. Virginia the three seed. State the ten seed. Playing its fourth game in as many nights. Here comes the double. They waited until DJ Barnes got right next to the lane. Diara with a shot clock at seven. Just a force, and it won't go. And a good defensive stand there by Virginia. Especially by Ryan Dunn. They did a good job of doubling as soon as DJ Burns got toward the lane. You know what? He catches it so far off the lane, that's a long distance to cover on a double team. He's such a good passer, he can find an open shooter. Great pass. Speaking of good passers, yeah, Beekman finds Minor. Here's Andrew Rohde, who didn't start the game, but he's starting the second half. Beekman, no. Dunn comes up with the loose ball, can't finish it. And Burns a one-handed rebound for State. Virginia able to keep a, a few of these rebounds alive. So the second guy winds up getting it. And off to Horn, now O'Connell. And again, a touch for Burns. It always seems to start with him getting a touch. Good pass. And Diara lays it in. DJ Burns, an excellent passer. He's having to go to that right hand in the, the lane. He's a left-hander, but a really nice cut by Muhammad Diar to make himself available for that layup. Burns played about 11 minutes in the first half. Middlebrook's the other nine. Boy, Virginia makes you guard so many screens in this mover blocker. The big guys are screeners, and the guards are cutters. O'Connell with a steal. Didn't like the numbers, pulls it back out. So hard to get transition against whoa, Virginia. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> O'Connell. And a minor down with it for Virginia. And Burns right now trying to dry off his hands on his shorts. Obviously got some perspiration, and that dribble was getting way away from him at the other end. NC State doing a good job of just mucking up that screen for the screener action in the middle of the lane. It's a fist fight to get open right now. 
Beekman for three, and I think O'Connell got a piece of it. And it's out of bounds. It still belongs to Virginia. Burns just backing down Miner, and when Ryan Dunn comes over to double in the middle of the lane, that just opened it up for that little cut by Mohamed Diara for the easy basket. Burns is a really good passer. He's got excellent vision. The issue is the shot clock was reset. And now the officials go into the monitor to see if the ball actually grazed the rim. It didn't hit anything. I don't think so either. The shot clock will be reset to 1.2 seconds. Nope, came up short. Didn't even hit the net. So 1.2 on the shot clock. Beat me to inbound. That's a pretty good play right there, Jay. Well, you can't worry about Ryan Dunn coming off to the right side. You worry about the lob to the basket, and NC State gave up an easy one. Ryan Dunn can jump out of the gym, and you just saw evidence of that. O'Connell, offensive foul. Just lowered that left shoulder. He had the angle, didn't need to do that. Just gave up the offensive foul. Here's the inbounds play, and Ryan Dunn lets that space clear, and Michael O'Connell just on the wrong side of him. You don't have to worry about him coming out to the short side and taking a jumper. You want him to do that. Beekman using the screen. Extra pass from Miner to Rohde. Rebound, Diara. Good offense by Virginia, but they just can't knock down the shot. Shot goes up. Three guys are back for Virginia just so they can take away transition. Good step back. Horn can't get it to go. But you take a quick shot, then you spend 30 seconds on defense. It becomes a time of possession game. Beekman, the kick. Dunn, not an outside shooter. Miner swings it to Rohde. Rohde gets it back. McNeely has it blocked. And a foul called on Diara. Well, Diara got a piece of it, but his body just went into McNeely. Clean up top of one of those, you got to let him land, right? After the ball was already gone. No issue with the call, right? No. Yeah, it's a foul. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> And it's three free throws for McNeely. Now, Virginia is a very poor free throw shooting team. 64% as a team. McNeely is an exception. 87%. Boy, even you're not a roundup guy. I got, I got 88. I round up from that 87.6. Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me look at the notes. 87.3. Oh, give him a break. <laughs> we can round up now with the two mates. I think he's up to 88 now. Only 8 for 18 last night against BC, but they won the game. Four-point lead to Virginia, a game that was tied at the half. I'd go back to some more ball screen action. Now it's two ball screens slipping. Stay by Horn. Screen by Horn. Try to get Taylor open. Viara into Middlebrooks. The double. He just fights his way through it, gets it back. And it's Virginia ball. Blake Buchanan down with it. Good stand by Buchanan. A lot of body contact, no call. Now Middlebrooks to steal. Boy, is he having a night. Ball's bouncing off of people. It's out of bounds and still belongs to the pack. 4.43 into the second half. Virginia leading by four.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let our expertise round out yours. Everett Case, legendary coach back in the 50s, Tommy Burleson, two-time ACC tournament MVP, Jim Balvano, won a couple, including the year that the Pac went on to win the national championship in 1983. NC State's won 10 of them, none since 87. Virginia's won three last in 2018. Carolina's won 18 last in 2016. One of these three programs is going to win a championship here tomorrow night. Big bucket for D.J. Horn to get State back within two. Strong drive. Caught the ball on the left side, just put his head down, got all the way into the lane. That's not the norm going against this Virginia pack line defense. Virginia going to more screen roll situations. Good fake. And another one by Groves. A shot fake and a pass fake, but then can't knock down the shot. And now State can tie or take the lead. But that was a smart play by Muhammad Diara just to fly at Jake Groves just to run him off that three point line. Get him inside the line. Boy, what a screen by Middlebrooks. And draws the foul. And Ben Middlebrooks is the best version of himself here tonight. He is helping this team in every way right now. Well, he's so good running into that ball screen, and then he laid out Isaac McNeely, but then quick into the roll. And Groves had to come over to try to take a charge, but it was too late to get there. That play will be under official review. And the last play is under an official review right now. Is it the possibility of a flagrant on that foul call? I guess. Just guessing. Yep. And I don't see what, I didn't see anything flagrant in it. It was a, a collision, but it was, looked like a, a clear foul to me. And that's just a standard charge block. Yeah. We have not been told exactly what it is they're looking at. So, but there's nothing flagrant there, obviously, at least that we can see. I'm not sure where they're trying to figure out who the foul was on. That's it was on Groves. If they were looking for any kind of elbow, I didn't see it. Kevin Keats just made like an elbowing motion as he is talking to one of the officials, A.J. Desai. So on the North Carolina State side, they must have seen something that led them to believe this maybe could be upgraded to a flagrant. Unless it occurred off the ball. That's possible, but if it was the main action of Middlebrooks, you know, rolling to the basket and the foul on the ball, I didn't see anything there. And now uh, AJ is going to come over. Jay, maybe we'll get you to take off your headset and we can get a little more info. Foul. On offensive end, we're looking to see if Middlebrooks got hit with an elbow. What do you got? Just looking to see if Middlebrooks got hit with an elbow. He said prior to the blocking call, I believe. But whatever it was, no flagrant. <laughs> So Middlebrooks at the line already 10 points five rebounds and a couple of steals in this game. He's been active in setting screens and he rolls off those screens and. You know, it's up to Virginia defense to pick up that role and it's not been as successful. Ryan Dunn returns for Virginia's Blake Buchanan sits down. And as well as Middlebrooks is playing, that gives DJ Burns more time to rest on the bench. They've been splitting the minutes pretty evenly so far tonight. And they're better defensively with Ben Middlebrooks on the floor. 
because he is a very good pick and roll defender as a big guy. And Virginia has been going to a lot more screen roll action than their sides action, that mover blocker stuff. There's a screen roll up top and you got McNeely replacing back up. Now back into their mover blocker. Beekman. Kicks to Groves, open for just a moment, left it short. And an easy uncontested rebound as Virginia was, they were all getting back. So Horn brings it down for the Wolfpack easily. Knocked out of bounds, still belongs to State. Well, we are six minutes and four seconds into the second half, and each team has scored six points. It was 29-29 at halftime. It'll slip. Slip. Yep, slips the screen. Still lots of time. Banging with Groves. Again, being very physical, but he missed it. He's just got to power right through Jake Groves. Murray off to McNeely. Back to Murray. What a challenge. Middlebrook's got him. Taylor, count it. NC State leads. But Taylor just went right into the chest of Isaac McNeely and backed him up just a smidge for that little step back jumper. That was not an easy shot. Nothing is easy in this game. Jaden Taylor, a couple of years at Butler before coming to Raleigh, averaging about 17 points per game in his last seven. O'Connell doing a nice job of staying with McNeely, getting over those screens. You have to go over with him, chase him off the line. Open on the baseline. Beekman ties it up. He's got 14, Jay. He carries a heavy load for Virginia on both ends of the floor. Second team all ACC. A lot of folks thought he would wind up on the first team with what he does at both ends. Diara, air ball. I don't like that shot. That was not a smart shot by Muhammad Diara. He worked so hard to get the ball back. You can't just give it up with that kind of shot. He's now one for four from three. The Wolfpack one for nine. Another block by Middlebrook. And another good job by Diara from running throws off the line. Horn a miss. Diara runs it down. O'Connell wide open. It all started with the defensive play by Middlebrooks. And you are never going to be more open than when you get an offensive rebound. Now a block called on O'Connell. Kevin Keats is stomping mad, but he's got to like what he saw the last time down the floor. Well, he liked what he saw defensively from O'Connell. He was in legal guarding position as a primary defender. Gets the block on one end, and then the three off the offensive rebound. Good contest by Middlebrooks, knocking this ball away. And after the offensive rebound, O'Connell with the wide open three. It's time to cut down some nets and claim some titles. Championship weekend is coming. All starting with college game day. Anything can happen. And a lot of things have already happened here tonight. Upsets around the country. Tomorrow you've got the SEC semis. Then the Big 12 championship game will have the ACC championship game at 8.30 tomorrow night. And then it's Selection Sunday. Beginning on Sports Center Live Bracket Reaction at 6 Eastern. Bracketology at 7. The NCAA Women's Selection Special at 8. And Bracketology as well. Just such a great, great time of year. It feels like the college basketball season, Jay, goes so quickly. It's more of a, a sprint than a marathon at times. And now there's just so much to talk about and focus on over these next few days. A lot of decisions being made on who's in and who's out. And seating is going to be important as well. A three for Tane Murray to tie it up. 
Tane Murray had 11 points against Boston College, went five of six from the field. He is a shooter that you have to make put it on the deck. O'Connell, tough one, got it back. Out of bounds, still belongs to NC State. And D.J. Burns getting back into the game after several more good minutes from Ben Middlebrooks. Meanwhile, Jordan Miner is looking over going, really? <laughs> <laughs> and the battle begins. He wants to get to the left hand. Miner won't let him, and there's a foul call. Well, with Virginia deciding not to double, they're just saying, look, we'll give you that tough two. And no, Tony Bennett doesn't want Jordan Miner to foul there. But that's better than having him kick it out for an open three or a drive of a closeout. It's not like there's any foul trouble for anybody. So if you got to foul him, he's a 66% free throw shooter. You know, to give you an idea, I mean, Jordan Miner knows where the weight room is. He is 6'8", 242, and D.J. Burns is just so huge that if he decides he's going to back you down, there's not much you can do about it. You just have to stay between him and the basket, try to make him take a tough shot without fouling. Knocks them both down. Three guards are the cutters in this mover blocker offense. The cutters are the movers, right? Yep. yep. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Dick Bennett offense. Tony Bennett's yep. dad, the great coach from Wisconsin, Stevens Point, and University of Wisconsin, Washington State. And if you want to know about it, you can go on YouTube and you can find uh, Dick Bennett talking about it, about the whole mover blocker scheme. Miner beating Burns down the floor. Diara had to come over and help. Left John open, but he missed the layup. Miner just waited too long. Go up right away. Just allowed the defense to recover. Horn on the drive. The floater, no. And Miner the rebound. DJ Burns looking at the official saying, I got a hit. Beekman, nice look off to Murray. Miner swings it back to Beekman. The pull up, short. Diara has it. For a moment, it looked like NC State had a chance to run. There had been precious few transition opportunities for either team in this game. Diara, no. NC State, two for 12 from three-point range. And a timeout taken by, taken by Tony Bennett. Two-point lead in the semifinals. Well, here inside Capital One Arena in Washington, when your team wins, you get a big sticker and you pop it up on the sign. Uh, in the hallway, and that is your way of celebrating as a team that you have advanced onto the next round. As you can see, it's a lot of red up there. The Wolfpack are playing for the fourth night. Beat Louisville Tuesday, beat Syracuse Wednesday, beat Duke last night, and now they get a two-point lead on Virginia here in the semis. It used to be punch your ticket to the championship game. Now it's place your sticker. <laughs> North Carolina awaits the winner. McNeely running around a couple of screens. He's the shooter you got to keep an eye on. Once the ball's passed, you come off a fade screen. Minor double teamed. Morcell saves it. Really good help by DJ Horn to knock that ball away. I think that's a seventh steal that NC State's had in this game. Middlebrooks back in for Burns for the Wolfpack. Horn can't find a seam. O'Connell is open. 
Around and out on the three. And as always, walking it up the court. The Who's and very patient, deliberate, trying to wear you down mentally and physically and get an easy look. And they do right there for Tane Murray. Just curling off that fade action on the right side. And sooner or later, all these cuts, Virginia expects to find an opening. Morcell. Knocks down the baseline jumper to put the Wolfpack back on top. Marcel had 25 against Louisville. And earlier in the year, he, he's a Virginia transfer. Mm -hmm. Two but, years in Charlottesville, third year in Raleigh. So when they run their stuff, Marcel knows what they're running. Ooh, ooh O'Connell a reach in foul. To take us to the under eight media timeout, the KC Morcell bucket putting the Wolfpack back on top. KC Morcell. Got a little bit of space, hand down, just went right up for it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. When you play in a game and DJ Burns is on the other side, you notice. Big physical guy. Although getting a lot of help from Ben Middlebrooks. A nice one-two combination in the middle right now for the Wolfpack. As we listen in to Kevin Keats in this most recent huddle. We're in a good situation. Keep rebounding that ball, Mo. They got to be one and done. When they come over that uh, move a blocker, you can't relax. You got to stay locked in. Okay? Every time, stay locked in. He did a good job getting a piece of that ball. You got to pressure the ball up top. Get a piece of the basketball. Right? We're good. You know, but as a coach, you probably can't say that enough. The way Virginia tries to wear you down. You got to stay locked in. You got to assume you're playing 30 seconds of defense every time because you are. And that's where Virginia gets you is at the end of a possession. You let up just a bit and you're giving up a layup or an open three. Beekman's having a great night for Virginia 14 points and seven assists. Middlebrooks leading NC State in scoring with 12. He's also got five rebounds and a couple of block shots. And NC State to bolster Kevin Keats's point, their defense has been good. I mean, they've held Virginia to 36% from the floor. They've blocked seven shots in this game. And they lead by two with seven and a half to go and a spot in the championship game on the line. Dunn will hoist a three. Got Middlebrooks. Miner doing some good work on the offensive glass for the Cavs. Kevin Keats not a fan of the call. Fifth team foul on NC State. Miner hands it right back to Beekman. McNeely gets open and knocks it down. Just faded off that screen a little bit to set his feet. It doesn't take him long. He does such a good job of going from a cut to shot preparation to the shot. His third three of the game. Virginia fans have gotten a lot noisier ever since that ball went in. Diara turns the corner. The force no good. And it belongs to the Hoos. Good defense by Ryan Dunn. He's so long, seven foot wingspan, athletic, can really move his feet. As noisy as this building's been in a while. Again, using a lot of time, and again, McNeely knocks it down. Well, his movement has been so impressive the last couple possessions.
Isaac McNeely with back-to-back -back buckets to give Virginia a three-point lead. McNeely is the one that can really hurt you. See him on the left side of the floor, just fades off for that open three, then curling right into his shot, beautiful form, and drills it. Welcome back, and now we'll look at the Phillips 66 Big 12 bracket. Houston already easily into the championship game, beating Texas Tech 82-59 to at the moment. Iowa State leading Baylor by 14 midway through the second half. That game is on ESPN. The winner of that one will take on the Cougs. At 6 Eastern tomorrow night on ESPN. That's right in front of our game. The Tar Heels against the winner of this one at 8.30. After seeing a couple shots go down, this is ratcheting up the Virginia defense. Tough turnaround by wow. Morcell. Wow. Boy, NC State needed that one. Morcell hit a short one a few possessions ago, and that was not an easy shot, but NC State needed that to go in. There's the fade, wide open. Tane Murray. Why does it work so well, that fade screen, possession after possession? Because you're playing help side defense, all of a sudden you get hit with a weak side screen. And then the ball goes from the right side to the left. Virginia by four. Morcell. Rebound McNeely. This is where Virginia, you can watch them get a little slip or drop it off to the big guy because you're worried about cutters. Murray tipped into the hands of Taylor. Under five to go. Horn for three. And Beekman rips down the rebound for Virginia. NC State, Jay, now two for 15 from three-point range. Big difference in this game. Virginia, seven for 19. And I think you'd agree the quality of the three-point looks has been significantly higher for Virginia tonight. It's so hard to get good looks. Wow. McNeely again. With the clock going down over the outstretched arm of Ben Middlebrooks. Largest lead of the game. Boy, Virginia running that mover blocker offense to perfection over the last three possessions. The fade screen. Now watch Murray up top. He's going to get that screen from Miner wide open off that pass from Reese Beekman. And then with the shot clock going down, Isaac McNeely, I'm not even sure he could see the basket over Middlebrooks. Ten assists for Reese Beekman. Tony Bennett loving the way this one's going right now. Earlier tonight in the first semifinal, Armando Bacon, R.J. Davis, and the Heels overcame a deficit that was as large as nine points in the first half of the game. Davis and Baycott just went off in the second half. Credit to Pitt. Fought hard, but come up short as Carolina wins 72-65. to Taping their sticker to the championship game. Is that what we're saying? Right yeah. Now? <laughs> and they'll play the winner of this one between Virginia and NC State. And this one has changed a lot in the last couple of minutes. Thanks to number 11 in white, Isaac McNeely, bad ankle and all, who is now up to 18 points, four of six from three-point range. Going into D.J. Burns. McNeely digging down. Boy, Miner, given as good as he gets. And Burns scores. Well, he's got such a tough, soft touch for being such a big, strong guy. He's part force, part finesse, and he won that one to make it a five-point game. But again, remember in a Virginia game how quickly that clock runs because they use so much time every time down the floor. 
O'Connell trying to have to stick with McNeely. Miner. Got it off, couldn't hit it. And then somehow got it back, but it's out of bounds to NC State. Boy, the Wolfpack a little fortunate there. Miner almost picked it up and laid it in. NC State really needs a score here. They've worked so hard defensively. And as always, Burns gets a touch. Knocked out of bounds by Miner, says Roger Ayers. Reese Beekman is saying, can you review it? But you can't do that until it's two minutes or under. So it'll be Wolfpack ball. Burns again, and it's a three-point game. I still like the strategy of Tony Bennett to not send the double. Make him make a tough one that takes time off the clock. And now there's going to be more time going off the clock while Virginia takes its time to run offense. They're going to start it with a little stagger. That's ball screen. Beekman accelerates, blocked from behind by Taylor. Virginia ball with six on the shot clock. I remember McNeely got a watch by Ryan Dunn. There he is. Isaac McNeely taking over here in the second half. He's got 20. It's too easy. Boy, he's been spectacular in the second half. And Taylor stepped out of bounds. Virginia with the ball and a five point lead and a chance to work in under two minutes. Nearly stolen by Morsell. Boy, Virginia gets a score here. A comeback is going to be awfully difficult. Starting McNeely in the middle of the lane with a ball screen he'll replace up top. Dunn lost it. Morcell oh. jams it. Well, he didn't want to give Ryan Dunn a chance to block it. So he removed all doubt. What a huge play for NC State. And it's down to three with a minute 40 to go. McNeely defended by O'Connell. Ten to shoot. Beekman baseline and he jams it. What a play. What a night for Reese Beekman. And a steal by Beekman, and he's fouled. Tony Bennett asking for a flagrant one because he was just grabbed there. That wasn't a play on the ball. And they are going to have a look at it. Boy, what a move by Reese Beekman, and a strong move to the basket to answer that Marcel dunk, and then he comes up with a steal on the other end. And that is not a play on the ball. Obviously huge. If it's called a flagrant one, it's two and the ball. And just a minute ten remaining in this game. Virginia up by five. You know, we've talked about the Wolfpack J play in their fourth game in as many nights. I don't know about you. I haven't noticed fatigue. I don't think that's been the issue in the game. I think Virginia just in the last few minutes, they've executed so beautifully at the offensive end. And maybe there is some 
fatigue for state of the defensive end in that regard, but they've just done such a good job getting McNeely open for clean looks. It's been possession fatigue, I yeah. would call it. You know, you get tired of chasing these guys around for 25 seconds and maybe make a mistake, let up just a little bit when you can't. You know, Tane Murray got open on one of those, Isaac McNeely on a couple. It's been upgraded to a flagrant one, so a couple of free throws and then possession for Virginia, and that could be lights out for the Wolfpack. Would have been difficult even had it just been called a common foul, but Kevin Keats pleading his case about something, and Tony Bennett is in there, two officials and both coaches listening in. Keats frustrated. And Reese Speakman walking to the free throw line. 16 points, and for the second night in a row, Jay, Beekman has tied his career high with 11 assists. Not sure there's a player in the conference, let alone the country, that carries as big a load as Reese Beekman carries for this Virginia team. Missed them both. Interesting, he's 75%. McNeely's 87%. Oh, but not a technical. The flagrant, so he had to, right? So, yeah, foul committed on him, but it is still Virginia ball. Murray has returned for Virginia. Dunn is going to sit. You know, with Virginia being such a poor foul shooting team, NC State might want to play the foul game here. Not the guy you want to foul. No. Out of bounds, still Virginia ball. 13 on the shot clock, 54 seconds on the game clock. If Andrew Rohde catches the ball, you might want to drill him. Beekman gets fouled, and he'll go right back to the free throw line. One and one for Reese Beekman here. Done back in now for Virginia. Free throw blockouts really important here for NC State. This time, Beekman knocks it down, nailing the front end. One of two, Middlebrook's the rebound, six-point game. Morcel, and he got fouled and will shoot three. Just not a good foul by a great defender in Ryan Dunn. Stopping the clock and sending an 80% free throw shooter to the line in Casey Morcel. Trying to get late pressure on it, just ticked his arm as he was going up. Clear foul. So the former Virginia Cavalier at the line for three. and Rhodey now take the place of Miller and Dunn for Virginia. Same five for NC State. Remember, Virginia still has three fouls to give, so they don't have to give up anything easy 
If NC State gets the ball back. Made them all and made it a one possession game. Here comes Diara back for the Wolfpack. Well, that's gutsy for Casey Marcel to drill those three free throws. I want to get the hands in, of the ball into the hands of Reese Beekman first, and then Isaac McNeely. They get it to McNeely. Thirteen seconds separating the game clock and the shot clock. Beekman on the drive. Rody in the corner missed it. Morcell's got it. Shot clock turned off. Timeout. Kevin Keats and NC State. Boy, and when that flagrant foul was called, it felt like it was basically game over, and it is anything but right now. Very well could have been, but Reese Beekman missed them both. Let's take a look at tonight's dynamic play of the game brought to you by T. Rowe Price. Well, Isaac McNeely in the second half coming off screens, ready to fire. He has had an outstanding game and an outstanding second half. This was the dagger as the shot clock was going down and then coming off the screen on out of bounds underneath, getting that jumper in the corner. But right now for Virginia, it's about defense. Take away the three, force NC State inside that line. And remember, Virginia has fouls to give here. Right. So they don't have to give up anything easy. If somebody gets away, you don't want to grab them, but you can foul them. But if you're NC State, are you just looking for the, the best quick shot you can get right now? If you can get a quick two, I take it. Absolutely. 16 seconds can go quickly. They can last an eternity as well. Beekman, McNeely, Dunn, Murray, and it looks like Groves going to be on the floor for Virginia. Although the fifth player is in doubt right now. Yeah, here comes Groves. O'Connell to inbound. He's out there with Taylor, Morcell. And now after seeing what he saw, Tony Bennett will use a timeout. Viara and Horn were out there as well. And I, you, if I'm Tony Bennett, I'm using these three fouls to give to drain this clock. Just as NC State gets into into something, if there's any sort of ball screen action, hedge out and hit somebody. Just get them before they get in the and shooting ma motion. Make right? them inbound it again. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. foul in any way any sort of shooter. This is kind of typical of the Virginia wins this year. A lot of them have been very, very close. They have played in these kinds of situations on a number of occasions. Again, O'Connell to inbound. And it's important to watch O'Connell as the inbounder as he comes back in. You can't just turn your head and let him shoot by you for an open shot. And Kevin Keats made a sub. He took Diara out. Burns is back in now after that second timeout. Horn. Can't get the shot off. Morcell gets it off. Can't hit it. McNeely's got it, and they foul him. Well, that is certainly not the shot that Kevin Keats wanted out of that timeout, but anytime. They defended D.J. Horn very well in that left corner, took the shot away. You know, Reese Beekman came over there with a high hand, and that's too big of a crowd. McNeely, 87% free throw shooter on the season, but this is one and one. And he missed it. Four seconds. O'Connell gets it off. And oh! 
Michael O'Connell banks in a prayer to send this game to overtime. Unbelievable. And the free throw line comes back to bite Virginia again. An 87% free throw shooter misses the front end. And Michael O'Connell is having himself a tournament. Unbelievable. I mean, an absolute prayer. Hand in his face, high arcing shot, banked it in. That was well defended. Isaac McNeely got a hand up, didn't foul. I mean, what can you do except tip your cap to an absolutely amazing shot and an amazing finish to regulation? Roger Ayers just coming over and saying, March Madness. And he's got that right. He knows we're on the air, right? <laughs> we're not bothering him during I, his job. No, I think so. Not the first time Roger's come over. Tony Bennett can't believe it. Boy, they missed yeah. free throws, Dan. You think about the two on the flagrant foul that yep. Reese Beekman missed. Yep. And then the front end missed by Isaac McNeely. So Beekman 75% on the year, four for seven tonight. McNeely's 87% on the year, two for four tonight. Those are all the free throws Virginia's taken. Two guys, Tony Bennett wants to take the free throws, but neither of them has been able to make them at the rate they've made them on the season. They are bottom 10 out of 362 Division I teams. Bottom 10 in free throw shooting on the season. And as a result, for the second night in a row, Virginia's going to overtime. And as a result, Cinderella. They're still playing here. The 10 seed NC State still has life. NC State knew they were playing four games in four nights. They didn't know it was going to be four and a half. But they've got to be so energized right now. And away we go. That O'Connell three was just the third three of the game. For NC State, the least likely to have gone down, and it did in 17 tries. Murray open. Rebound done. You have to be really mindful not to overhelp on Murray or McNeely. Morcel trying to make it tough on McNeely. Doesn't matter the way he's shooting the ball right now. Wow. That was big time. His fifth three, he's got 23 points. Burns. Somehow hits again. His touch is amazing. Fourteen now for DJ Burns. Virginia by one. But Miner is just picking off O'Connell every time he comes around him. Tried to do it to Horn now. Isaac McNeely doesn't need much space at all. This gave a little hesitation, step back, and just too difficult for Casey Marcel to put the brakes on and then recover to him. O'Connell on to McNeely at the moment. Beekman, the kick. Done for three from the corner, burns the rebound. Well, that's a shot that NC State doesn't mind giving up. You can help off Ryan Dunn. Burns steps out to get a touch, usually down on the block. O'Connell back to him in traffic. He lays it in, and the Wolfpack leads. Burns just set that screen and just rolled right down into the middle of the lane. And who's going to stop that? Back-to-back -back buckets for Burns. Good closeout by O'Connell. First lead in over eight minutes for the Wolfpack. Oh! It didn't last long. 
That's what Ryan Dunn can do as well as anybody. Talk about above the rim. My goodness. Back to Burns. He wants a whistle. Feeling he's getting pushed by Miner. Spins. Hits again. They're not going to count it. Foul before the basket. Which one? <laughs> This is pretty good theater right here, isn't it? That is a big time finish by Ryan Dunn. My goodness. So foul before the shot, and Virginia still with fouls to give. A block from behind laid in by Diara and stayed back on top. Horn drew three defenders to block that shot, opened up the offensive glass for Diara. Fourth game in four nights for the Wolfpack as they try to pull off another win here, this time in overtime against Virginia. Good job by Morsell. Better job by Dunn, got free of Diara. And the Cavs are back on top. Well, Diara went for the steal and took himself out of the play. Again, Burns looking at the official. Again, feeling there should have been a call. That one's going to count. He is something else. That is like guarding a tank. Good grief, what a move. And you know the tank wants to get to his left hand, but that time he tricked him and spun back to his right. What an overtime for DJ Burns. NC State has to stick to Tane Murray and Isaac McNeely. Here comes Murray. Here comes Beekman. Ten to shoot. Five to shoot. Beekman forces it up. And it belongs to the Wolfpack. Boy, what a great job by Casey Morsell. Got some help from DJ Burns to get back in front and really challenge that shot. One minute remaining in overtime. And guess who? Good pass. Diara, no. Diara's got it back. Shot clock didn't reset. O'Connell on a great feed from Horn. Timeout, Tony Bennett with the Wolfpack now up by four. Well, DJ Burns is just making play after play. Plays for himself and then plays for others. And on a broken play, Michael O'Connell, who got NC State to overtime, finds himself wide open underneath. What a response by NC State. How grim did it look toward the end of regulation? Right at the, when that flagrant foul was called, it looked like it was lights out for NC State. The missed free throw by Isaac McNeely. And as time is running out, the transfer from Stanford, who is having a great tournament, makes a miracle shot from right in front of the NC State bench. Just kisses it off the glass. And Tony Bennett, shoulders slumped. Can't believe it. If I'm not mistaken, it was a five-point lead, I believe, for Virginia when the flagrant was called and Beekman missed the two free throws. And there wasn't, there was a minute and change left. There wasn't a whole lot left. And boy, all the credit in the world to NC State. When Burns gets a touch, so many things happen. He might try to score, he might dish, but bodies are flying, everybody's trying to get the ball out of his hands, 
and it just disrupts even a great defensive team like Virginia. Well, and there, there's been no double team coming to them. It was a decision that Tony Bennett and staff yep. made. They wanted to go one-on-one -on -one in the post. They usually come to double but because Burns is such a good passer. Didn't want to take the risk of opening it up from three. And they held, uh, they held uh, excuse me, NC State, they held them like two of 17 from three during regulation up until O'Connell hit that, right. that three to tie it up. But DJ Burns has been a man among men in this overtime period. And it's all come off that right block. Getting the foul and still completing the play with that left hand off the glass. He's got 19 in the game. Seven of them have come in overtime. I don't know that you can ask Jordan Miner to do much more than he's done. I mean, he's, you know, given... He's fought. He's given everything that he can give. He is out of the game right now. Jake Groves has come back in. Groves is in to shoot it. This yeah. is about offense right now yeah. for Virginia. They don't have to have a three here, but they have to get something relatively quickly. Which is not their M.O. normally. Not their style, yeah. no. Groves 48% from three. Murray can shoot. Obviously, McNeely can shoot. Groves, no. Ball's loose. And out of bounds to Virginia is the call. They will have a look at the monitor. With 26.5 seconds to go. Looks like Middlebrook's got a hand on it first. Well, but from behind him, that was Ryan Dunn's hand. Is uh, How are they going to view this? Like, look, watch Ryan Dunn's right hand. Yeah. But call on the floor is Virginia ball. Wow. Is that enough? <laughs> I mean, it looked, looked to me on the replay like Dunn hit it, but is that enough? Is that conclusive evidence? Yeah, whose finger yeah. touched it last? Right. Sometimes one player hits it, but hits it off the finger of another player out of bounds, and just so tough to tell, even in slow motion. Yeah, it seems like Virginia is going to wind up keeping this. I, I don't think you can say that's conclusive video evidence. But I think NC State has to think about defense here. If they wind up getting the ball, great. But think more about sticking with Isaac McNeely and protecting the middle. It is Virginia Bowl. The call stands, and they'll inbound with 26.5 to go. And now they put three tenths of a second back on the clock, 26.8. You have to expect that everybody from Virginia is going to be going after the glass as well. O'Connell to the deck. Corner three no for McNeely. And now a foul. That is just the sixth team foul committed by Virginia. So in overtime here, they're not even in the one and one yet. And State will inbound it. Yara to inbound. You want to try to get it to Michael O'Connell if you can. Casey Morsell, also an 80% free throw shooter. But inbounding is his number one deal. Into Horn, and he's quickly fouled, and now he will head to the line. Virginia fans, no doubt, in disbelief at the way the last minute and a half or so of regulation went. The missed free throws and then the semi-miraculous banked in three by Michael O'Connell. I would remove the semi from that. <laughs> Give the guy a miracle. Yes. Round up. <laughs> Round up, that's fair. <laughs> one and one. On a night where Horn has now scored five and Jaden Taylor has scored two, two big time scores for them. They have gotten unbelievable numbers out of their two big guys, Burns and Middlebrooks. They've combined for 31 points in this game. 
And NC State is now up by six. No fouls, no threes for NC State. Rose for three. Diara's got it. Off to Horn, another foul. And what an improbable turn of events here in Washington. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. DJ Burns said it last night, quote, we're not ready to leave just yet. Looked like they maybe weren't going to have a choice. But now it looks like they're going to take on Carolina tomorrow night. This is reminiscent of the cardiac pack when Jim Valvano played the foul game back in 1983. And for those maybe not familiar with state situation, don't watch a lot of the ACC, NC State is... As far as any, but what anybody can tell, not under consideration for an at-large, but they will be alive heading into tomorrow night. And if they win tomorrow, it's a championship and it's an automatic bid. McNeely. Game over. Their fourth win in four days. And Kevin Keats and the Wolfpack are headed to the championship game to take on the Tar Heels, Mr. Billis, tomorrow night. An absolutely incredible finish to this basketball game. NC State seemed like they were six feet under and missed free throws by Virginia. Opened the door and Michael O'Connell closed it with a 30-some footer off the glass. They Amazing. Got, they got out of the quicksand, to use your term from earlier. You do, but they did. And how about what DJ Burns did in overtime, too? I mean, just absolutely imposing his will on the Virginia Cavaliers and scoring basket after basket in the extra frame. A 10 seed is going to the championship game. from Tuesday to Saturday. How improbable is this? Never been done in this league. Been done in others, never been done in this league. Is Virginia safe? Are they in for sure? Yes. Most think so. Yep, they will There's find no question. They will find out for sure on Sunday. North Carolina State's got a chance well, to steal a bid and to get in by virtue of being the tournament champs if they can knock off Carolina. Tomorrow night is going to be quite a scene in this building between red and blue, isn't it? Well, North Carolina State and North Carolina is a longtime rivalry, but how NC State got there, how energized are they? Let's hear from DJ Burns. He's with Jess. DJ, congratulations. You just won your fourth ACC tournament game in four days. How are you feeling right now? Really good. Um, all the odds were stacked against us, and our guys came through, and we got it done. Absolutely. And so you absolutely dominated, and you brought your team into overtime. How do you do it? You, have, you go to the basket so aggressively, but then you finish so lightly. How do you do it? Uh, to be honest, I felt myself getting a little frustrated with not getting foul calls, and I told myself, I said, you got two options. You can get in your feelings or you can go win this game, and that's what we did. Speaking of winning this game, the job is not done. You have tomorrow the finals against your rival, UNC. How are you going to complete the mission? Uh, I'm about to go work with, need a massage, um, get some work done, get some treatment, and prepare. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. What a night for him. Big fella going to get some rest. Their fifth game in as many days tomorrow night at 830 Eastern against an in-state rival, a rivalry that goes back forever. It'll be the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels. They made a stand at the defensive end. And then the big fella got it going at the offensive end. And the Wolfpack, thanks to the Miracle 3-2, they're off to the championship game. We'll see you tomorrow night. Hawaii, UC Davis, coming up right now. That masseuse is going to have quite a job. <laughs>
and the Tar Heels punch their ticket to the ACC Championship. The 36th time in program history, the most by any team in the ACC, but they would not be outdone by the end of this game. And Michael O'Connell, the buzzer beater to send it to overtime. And then the Wolfpack come out on top. We're gonna get to see Carolina and NC State of North Carolina. In-state showdown coming your way in the ACC Championship here from Washington, D.C. tomorrow. There's the moment. It's not official until the sticker goes on. And you see the bracket is now officially set as both of these teams have punched their ticket to the championship game. It'll be the seventh meeting for these teams in the championship. They met two times this season. North Carolina won both of those games, but this NC State team Fifth game in five days, the first team to ever play five and five in the ACC tournament. And they're also reaching as a double digit seed, just the second team to ever do that. They also did it back in 2007. And when that happened, they played the number one seed, North Carolina. So a lot of things the same, but many things different as we get this show down, as we say hello from inside Capital One Arena alongside our Hall of Famer, Jim Beheim, Joel Berry II, Carlos Boozer, Luke Hancock, our national champs, Kelsey Riggs, hanging out with you here. We are excited to be joined by some NC State players in just a second but first we got to start with what we just saw Woo. i mean coach how about that ending that's why i'm sitting right here <laughs> uh, no part of that. i mean you gotta you gotta hand it nc state i mean not just the last shot the shot before that they had to make they had to get a stop and then they get that shot up there and you know against arguably the best defensive team in the country and you can talk about well foul don't foul them you know, that shot, I mean, that's a one in a hundred, but that's what happened. But the one went in. I imagine the dance moves were awesome last night in that locker room, but they are tonight. going to be <laughs> rocking tonight. 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 I mean, those two nights in a row, Booze? Unbelievable, man. Joe, Joe we were talking before the game, like, this gets you fired up just being in this atmosphere. You get some, some chills. I am so ready to play right now. I'm so fired up. <laughs> I know. These two overtime games for Virginia, the way NC State closes this out, all the little things that have to happen. You can go through strategy. There's certainly going to be guys for Virginia that are kicking themselves about the end of this game. But we're celebrating NC State. And yeah. Kevin Keats, what a win. What a run. I love the surfing from his son right there. That's the best slap of the, <laughs> the sticker up on the board that we've seen so far. I'm just so fired up. That was awesome. you got to be fired about, about what you've seen, Joel, from Michael O'Connell, who we're looking forward to hearing from, hopefully. I mean, 12 points in this game. His fourth straight game with double-digit scoring. He only had three of those all season. Yeah, this is big. And, I mean, the biggest shot that he's probably ever taken in his life was in this game and knocking down that three-point shot as we see right there. Michael O'Connell has been balling, simply put. And NC State has needed him in every single game. As I said before, when you come into these tournaments, you need contributions from everyone on your team. And Michael O'Connell has been stepping up in big ways for this team, man. One, one heck of a shot right there. Booze, it can't just be about him, though. It's got to be about DJ Burns, especially when you look at what he did in overtime. Man, the big Ooh. fella was eating <laughs> tonight. Obviously, O'Connell hits a, a hell of a shot. And ha hats off to Virginia. They played a hell of a game, too. But DJ Burns wanted the ball, got the ball, took his time, backed, backed himself down. And Mata did a hell of a job. I'm not going to lie. Mata was, had his hands full, did a hell of a job. But DJ Burns was hitting that left hand. As soon as he felt the contact, was spinning off. Really should have had two and ones. Probably. Got the last and one. Just played so big for this team. Was a monster in the paint. I love seeing it, man. They let them play a little bit. It's, it felt like old school ACC tournament. Letting everybody be physical. Soft touch right there. Coach, did he like that? I mean, he's good, and he, he won the game for him. They didn't want to double. And then uh, and coach. he made him. He just was not going to be denied. Yeah. It, the one thing I'll just take a look back at for a second. I think this game, when they forget about with the ending, will be good for Virginia. Mm. Virginia showed some offense. They had to have some offense they tonight. They made some threes. They hit shots. They executed. I, I think this game, when you get away from the, the ending of it, should be a very positive for Virginia going into the NCAA tournament because they proved something to me on offense a little bit last night, but really tonight.
Yeah, you I know. thought Isaac McNeely was special. Yeah, he was great. I mean, late in the game, they're struggling to score, and he kind of just decided, I'm going to start shooting the rock. Yeah. I mean, he had those mm -hmm. looks in the first half, but really – decided, hey, we got we to gotta start generating some offense. We got to get some things going and just started knocking down shots from everywhere. Three balls. Pump fake is mm -hmm. so smooth. When you shoot it like that, everybody's going to jump on a pump yeah. fake. But he's just steady, so in control, stays in his role. And when he has the opportunity, he lets that thing go and is an elite, elite shooter. And again, six for 11 from the free throw line. And yeah, you, know, you can overcome that. They overcame it last night. If he makes that one free throw, game is over. Game's over. Yep. Yeah. They did knock down nine threes, but uh, as you mentioned, Coach, those five free throws were big. Would have been a difference maker for Virginia, something I'm sure that they will continue to focus on as they get ready for the NCAA tournament. Wait to see what happens the rest of March. Let's show you how this actually went down, though. We got the highlight because, man, it was a back-and-forth battle and a great one as Virginia, the three seed, trying to be the ones that slow down this hot NC State team, they came in as the 10 seed, but don't tell them that Isaac McNeely knocking down the threes early and often in this one. Yeah, he's an elite shooter. Like I said, he's got walk in the building range, stays in control, and he's so ingrained in what they do with that mover blocker system in that offense, just knows how to hunt shots. He was hot early, and then Virginia tries to go inside. Why not go to him again, Joel? Yeah, go to him again. He's just a tough shot maker. Win. He's the X factor for the Virginia team. When he's hitting shots, it opens up so many things for them. Virginia with a five-point lead. Casey Morsell doesn't want any more of that, though, Coach. Well, that was a big turnover right there. It's a five-point game. That's a big-time finish. You have an elite, leads the conference in shot blocker, blocks, running you down right there, and that's how you have to finish that one. Okay, so you see the missed free throw there. Then O'Connell races up the floor. Come on, Booze! Unbelievable shot right there. One in a hundred. Another look at that shot. I wonder how long it felt like that was in the air for him. Because for glass. me, it felt like 45 Still seconds. Yeah. Did he call bank, Joe? Uh, I don't think so. Watch it. Doesn't matter. Time, it doesn't <laughs> matter. To it's overtime okay. we go. You get more from him. Dishing it off to DJ Burns. NC State up one. Then two to go. Virginia back on top. Burns again, boo. Man, was just so so dynamic. Going to the basket. No double team come. No double. Let me eat. Then on the inside, battling it out. They kick it out Look at eventually. TJ oh, nah. Horn. I mean, the wherewithal to see O'Connell sitting right there, waiting for the bucket. 73 to 65. NC State wins it in overtime. There's the dance moves and the jumping. Coach Keats and the crew it. celebrating as NC State is in the championship game for the first time since 2007. Just the second time a double-digit seed has reached the ACC championship game. Look who's standing by, the two stars of the game. Yeah. We've got Michael O'Connell. We've got DJ Burns joining us here on set in just moments. Stay tuned. That's coming back on the other side of the break. Welcome back into Nothing But Net. How about what we saw from the Wolfpack? Not just today, not just yesterday, not the day before, but four straight wins here in the ACC tournament as they are the 10 seed getting ready to take on the one seed in an in-state rivalry <laughs> matchup with North Carolina coming your way tomorrow. A special moment there as the guys got to celebrate. And we've got two of the stars from not just tonight's game, but the tournament here with us right now, Michael O'Connell, DJ. Burns guys first of all congratulations I'm sure that was a really fun locker room to walk into Michael I want to start with you and the shot at the buzzer to send it to overtime tell me what you saw and what you felt when that bucket finally went in because it felt like it went around and around for yeah. about an hour for me I don't know how you felt <laughs> I mean yeah when I got that with from Casey I was kind of I was trying to go get a shot up myself. If not, I'd try to find someone else. So I just want to thank God. He gave me the confidence to go take that shot. And I, I knocked it down. And when I finally saw it go through, I was, you know, electric. <laughs> DJ, it's takeover time for you in overtime. Just tell me the mindset. I know it was physical down there. There were lots of calls that could have been made either way. But you just decided to take over. That left hand, man, that thing is magic. Tell me uh, about it. I would say that's exactly what it was. Um, early on, I felt like I wasn't getting foul calls, and I just decided um, instead of getting my feelings, we're going to go win this game. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. The yeah. emotion after you got the last damn one. You flexed over there in the crowd. Just giving, get, put me in that moment. Uh, um, really, we just we decided we were going to take over. 
there was no there was no turning back from that moment. Once he hit that shot, I knew we were gonna win the game. Love you it. decided you were gonna take over. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I can't I build by myself though. <laughs> I, I, I remember seeing you in the in the overtime, demanding the basketball, taking your time, being patient, seeing a no double team. Take the take the viewer through that moment. Tell your fans out there what you were seeing in that moment. Honestly, I just knew to be aggressive. If they don't double team, there was no reason to be looking to pass. Um, I did that a little bit too much the first time we played these guys, and I definitely knew I had to take advantage. Well done, man. Well done. Mike, Michael, one thing I, we just talked a little bit, but when when your guy went out, when, when DJ went out, and you had to step in, it seems to me that just carried over all the way now, and you're just out there like you're starting and you're going to play. Yeah, I think when you got a, a guy like that, such like talent on offense and just yeah. a presence on the floor when he's out, you have to try to make up for it, whether it's me doing it or other guys on the team just trying to fill that void. So I'm um, just trying to go out there and have the confidence, and I want to obviously win games. So just trying to be confident out there and help my team win. What, what has that been like for you? Because you had three times during the regular season where you scored in double figures. You got four straight games right now where you have stepped up in a big way. I see this guy nodding along. I know all your teammates are really proud of you. But, but what's the confidence level at for you knowing that you can come out and can, can contribute this way? I mean, it's, it's high for sure. I mean, throughout the season, I wasn't always trying to look to score because we such, have great scores around me. Yeah. So I was trying to facilitate a little more, get these guys involved and get them going to win the games. But right now, the opportunities have presented themselves and <laughs> I'm just trying to step up and make the plays to help win the game. So At the right moment, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to have to do this real quick. Cause, hey! hey. I got to bring out the glasses, man. Uh, man, look, I got to, first off, we got to take credit for this because we picked them as the dark horse. <laughs> you you did. Yes. Look how far we got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we, we picked you guys, but talk about, well, what is the underrated aspect of this team and why, how y'all are able to come out here and do what y'all did tonight and throughout the whole tournament? Yeah, I think just the, or cohesion, we're able to stay together even in times when times are tough. Like at the end of the season, we obviously weren't winning the games that we wanted to win, but we were always stuck together no matter what. No guys got too low and tried to get sep and separated. We all stayed together and we knew we still had a chance to go make a run in this tournament. So we all switched our gear to one game at a time when we got to the tournament and we've been kind of taking care of the job so far. And, and but plus, you didn't have an easy game. When you got to go through mm -hmm. Syracuse, meet, meet you twice, and you just took handled business. But every game you had to show up. There was nothing easy. Yep. It, every game was like that. That's that's a tremendous credit to your coach and to your cohesion of, of your whole team. You know, tonight uh, Taylor gets two. Last night gets 18. Mm -hmm. You know, tomorrow he'll probably get 18. I mean, that's <laughs> what I see with your team. Yeah. That everybody's there, but you need this big guy in there all the time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he, <laughs> I, he's our driving factor for sure. I got a question for both of you to answer. Looking ahead to tomorrow, North Carolina, one of the best teams in the country. What can you guys do to try to beat them tomorrow? Uh, I say it starts with having a smart night when we leave here, get hydrated, mm. go get everything that we need to get done, get some good film in, and get some rest. None yeah. of the, the extra BS. <laughs> Bigger celebration in that locker room last night or tonight? What do you think? I wasn't in the locker room last night, so I don't know. <laughs> I'd say it was definitely a lot louder tonight. Better dance moves yeah. in there? For sure. I love it. I, I would imagine they'll be even louder tomorrow because of everything that's on the line. You guys have a chance to come out here and steal a bid. You have a chance to take down North Carolina. You hadn't been able to do that this season. And, oh, yeah, it's an in-state rivalry. It, Michael, you first. Just the aspect of all of the different things of this game that's on the line, especially when it comes to the in-state rivalry. What's that feel like? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just AC tournament championship, so that's our main focus. We're mm -hmm. not worrying too much about the in-state rivalry, but then it, on the second point, obviously, we're playing UNC, top-ranked team in the country. You know, all the fans are going to be into it. We want to make sure we can, we can bring one home for the fans. You know, they've been waiting for one, so hopefully we can go out there, compete, and then obviously I got an old team on UNC, so it's going to be a fun competition out there for sure. DJ? Uh, you know, we're ready. I think that we can be any team in the country. It just happens to be them, and we'll be ready for them. That's simple. We can't wait tomorrow, 8.30 on ESPN. You, ESPN, you guys, congratulations. Five games in five days. Go go get that ice bath. Go get that massage, whatever else you need to <laughs> yeah. do. We look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Yep, thank Joel, you so Joel, you look good, and DJ's good. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The chain is next, baby. I need one from you. Uh, all right, job, so we man. mentioned that Michael, they are going to play man. North Carolina in the championship game. Let's show you how the Tar Heels got here because it was a great game between them and Pitt this 
earlier this evening as you see both of these teams all fired up. The boom box is out. Pitt and North Carolina ready to go. And the freshman, Joel, Bob Carrington, he was ready. Bob Carrington was going from the start. Carolina couldn't do anything from him. He was just hitting it, hitting from the inside and hitting from the three-point line as well. Then Armando Baycott gets him going. Big slam there. North Carolina still trailing. Then game tied. And we mentioned Bob Carrington. 24 points. They needed every point from him because, Luke, check out this graphic and what happened with Ish and Blake. Yeah, you know, the strategy, the chess match from both these coaches, I really loved watching. Uh, the stars showed up. These guards are electric for Pitt. The studs, the All-American studs for UNC just took over the game and just did a little bit better, made a few more shots. That was RJ. Then it's Armando Baycott, the steal, coast to coast for the dunk. North Carolina takes a three-point lead, but then, although Blake wasn't able to score in the first and Ish wasn't able to score in the first, they come up big here. Booz, it's Henson. Great job. They were waiting for that all night. That was a big play. Got them some good momentum in that moment. Then mentioned the freshman, Bob Carrington. Coach, how about Jalen Lowe, uh, 17 points? I mean, you're talking about a freshman backcourt that isn't <laughs> what they were in the beginning. Yep. It's what they are right now. And any team they play in the NCAA tournament is going to have their hands full. No Ensuing doubt. possession here, North Carolina. R.J. Davis, 25 points. He knocks down the three. Tariels take a three-point lead. And then Luke Armando Baycott right there at the end saying, hey, we got one more to go. As you see, Carolina takes care of business. 72 to 65, the final. We got to catch up to one of those stars, Armando Baycott, after the game. And we are excited now to be joined by Armando Baycott. 19 points, 11 rebounds, another double-double. But I want to talk about what this means to the team. This is your fifth year here and the first time that you guys are going to get to play for an ACC championship. What does that mean to you? I mean, it's a huge accomplishment for us, but we're still not done. But all year, this is one of our main goals was obviously to win a regular season. But the ACC tournament was something we really wanted to win. And to be in this position with just one more game left, we're super excited. Earlier in the game, you got Fetty uh, Rico in foul trouble, and then Diaz Graham comes in the game, and then he hits those two threes. But after that, that was his only threes the rest of the game. What were the changes that were made to be able to stop that effective outside shooting from him? Well, usually we like to ice every ball screen, but a big like that, he can shoot. So it really made it tough on us because their guards are so crafty. So uh, Coach Sully just told us we had to switch everything, and really I just had to guard, and, I mean, that really helped us. Armando, what does it say about this team that when you guys need to win, it's guys like you and RJ, the vets that have been here for so long, that are able to step up in moments like these? Well, I mean, in big-time games like this, big-time players got to show up. And, I mean, Coach, he's been challenging us all year. But specifically in this game with a physical team like that and the well Coast team, we need our veteran stars to step up. And I think we all did a great job. And, I mean, Harrison, he did a phenomenal job uh, on Henson. Henson's one of the best shooters in the ACC. And for him to hold him, so I think like five or six points, it was amazing. That's the one thing that I've been harping on about this team is that you all can win in different ways. You could be, it could be you, it could be RJ, it could be Cormac. What does that, how does that help y'all's, help y'all's team, especially going into the championship tomorrow, but moving forward as you get into the NCAA tournament? I mean, it's a huge luxury because you get so many different looks from different teams in the tournament. And you really don't know what you're gonna get, but when you have different guys that can step up at different positions, it allows us to play differently on offense and do different things. Armando, I know every year for you it seems like it's another record and you only care about the big picture, but with that 84th double-double, you've now tied Ralph Sampson. What does that mean to you? I mean, really, I don't know how he did it in, I think, three years. That's pretty crazy <laughs> to think it took me five, but super excited. I mean, rebounding, obviously, that's one of the big things that Coach Williams, Coach Robinson has harped on me when I first got to UNC, so to make it to this point, just super blessed. I think Carolina fans feel super blessed to see him make it to this point and to see this team here as well. Joel, uh, we got to talk a little bit to him about what it was like to step up. But for you, Luke, to see the big guys, the stars, the vets for them play the way they did tonight, what does that say about this team? 
Yeah, it's nice that the, the guys who kind of serve some different roles step up in different times, Harrison, Cormac, those guys. But when the lights shine brightest, you need your studs to step up and play well. Armando was an absolute beast in the middle. RJ, the just clutchness and the readiness to take those big shots in the big moments. This is why I think Carolina's playing as good as basketball as anyone in the country. You know, Houston, UConn, Carolina are playing at a different level than anyone else, in my opinion. And, you know, again, when you needed them to step up in the big moment, they played like all Americans. They played like player of the year candidates. Yeah, I'm not surprised that the, the two best players on the team were the ones that were carrying the team yep. in this game. Armando was so aggressive, so dynamic, using his footwork, great touch. R.J. Davis hit two of the biggest shots, was one for seven before those two big threes that he hit, stepped up and made huge free throws. I mean, these two guys have been all the way to the championship game, fell short. The one thing that they're missing, one of the things that they're missing is the ACC tournament title. They want it bad. And when I look at what they did offensively, we talk about R.J. Davis at the end of the game. But what I love about what Armando said is what Harrison Ingram did on Blake Henson. Mm. And because that, that, that just lets me know that all of those guys are locked in on the scouting report. You have to know where everyone is. You have to know what other guys can do. And Harrison Ingram prop didn't show up much on the offensive end, but he did his job by holding Blake Henson, who is a huge piece to what Pitt does to five points with no three-point baskets. We talk about how Blake Henson, Luke, was, uh, was, is it, so dangerous from the yes. outside. And you are, you're able to neutralize a guy like that. Having someone who wants to take on that role and take on that battle is very important. You know what Harrison said after the game? He said he felt disrespected that Blake Henson was picked up there way above him and that Harrison was 13. Oh, so he, he took said he was coming out here and I took that personally. That's yeah. exactly right. Well, I mean, he's locked in and defense, and defense, and that's great. And uh, sometimes when you do that, your offense suffers a little bit. But my my concern, I'm sure he was thinking about this tonight. They have to have more than two guys. I mean, yeah. when yeah. they've struggled this year, Harrison Ingram, Cormac Ryan have got to be able to play, and Cadeau, you know, obviously two two guys aren't aren't going to win here tomorrow. They'll need those guys, but they've been there all year. I think they'll be ready. North Carolina getting ready for another ACC tournament championship. First time they've played in it since 2018. But the last time that they won it, 2016 <laughs> in D.C. And uh, our guy over that? here. Big well, shot, Barry. Uh, I I want you pat him on his back. He's uh, sitting right next to he's you. He's been patting himself. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he does that. I can't get over <laughs> None of these teams are ready to pat themselves on the back yet yeah, based off time. of what we've seen. And, and as we get ready for March, you take a look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology. He does have North Carolina as a uh. one seed, Duke a four seed. You see Virginia last four in. Even though the way they battled, Luke, quick thought on Pitt. We'll get into it more tomorrow. Crazy. Watch the games. Pitt Jeez. is a tournament team. Come on. Just watch. Get something. Joe out of here. <laughs> All right, much more tomorrow. we got a whole hour and a half on ACC Network tomorrow. So we'll be ready. We're coming with the receipts and the guys ready to talk all their thoughts. Meanwhile, we'll take a look at the title game. Can NC State win five in five days or are the Tar Heels taking home the title? Welcome back into Nothing But Net, man. We're going to be with you for a couple fun ones tomorrow. Game it doesn't tip off until 8.30. We're going to get things started at 7, a full hour and a half free game show. If baseball ends early, we're going even longer than that, so be ready. Also, we'll break it down for an hour afterwards. Be joined by the winning team, whoever gets this ACC championship title. Meanwhile, let's take a look at tonight's dynamic play of the game brought to you by T. Rowe Price. Is there any question where we're going with this one, Booz? Nope. nope. O'Connell was special all tournament, and this shot right here is why I got him on my first team all tourney, baby. He's got to be on there. Another double-digit scoring game. That one, look at the reaction. As you see, this is going to be a classic game tomorrow. This is the seventh time North Carolina and, and NC State have met in the championship. The second most played title game in event history. You see it would have been historic either way as Virginia would have been the seventh, but it is the Wolfpack that is going for five wins in five days. So let's go, Joel Berry. Thoughts on tomorrow? Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs>
<laughs> no, I think this is going to be a hard fought battle. Um, I'm excited to see the matchup between DJ Burns and Armando Baycott. Um, but I think for NC State, they'll have to come out and guard tomorrow. Um, but for NC State, they just got to continue to score the ball and continue to get contributions from all the other guys. Coach? I mean, in North Carolina, they played so great yesterday. Not as great today. They're going to have to go back and get everybody involved. NC State, they look like a team on a mission. I, I think they could do it tomorrow. When you plan for your tournament life, good things are going to happen. NC State's going to come out with so much energy. Yeah. What you want? A prediction? I think I'm going with the Wolf Pack tomorrow. Hey. Oh, he's feeling it right now. We're going to make the picks official tomorrow. Um, I'm my sunglasses just, all I care about is who you pick, Joel Berry, because I'm coming for you in the standings. We'll see what happens there. If you take a look at some of the scenes from tonight, Wolf Pack win. We'll see them go head to head with the Char Heels tomorrow. We'll see you at 7.